my lovely, lovely imps, both live and those of you who are watching on YouTube in the future, we are now about to do a debate review. We are about to review a debate between a pagan content creator by the name of Ocean Keltoy and a uh, horse-loving market socialist by the name of Vosh, AKA the Kharkiv Kid Finder. Um, this is a, a debate about anti-theism. Now, for those of you uh, who don't know, I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian cult. It was an incredibly uh, uh, distressing uh, experience. It, 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 uh, you know, it has affected the way that I look at a lot of aspects of religion. And for a long time after I left the church, I considered myself an anti-theist. Uh, to this day, I still consider, consider myself an atheist, though over the course of a couple of years, I've started to move away a little bit from the anti-theist position, if only because I just am not as convinced as I once was by the arguments of anti-theism specifically. On my channel, I have talked at great lengths critiquing Christianity. Um, I am incredibly critical of fundamentalist Christianity and Christianity as a whole. Um, I have critiqued uh, hyper-traditionalism, uh, or ultra-orthodoxy, fundamentalism, dogmatism, um, and all of the, and, and hyper-religiosity in various forms. Um, I've also, uh, at various times, uh, had sort of long discussions about uh, spirituality, about, um, I've even had a couple of debates about whether or not religion itself is intrinsically a bad thing. This is a very, very important issue for a lot of people. People obviously feel very strongly about their religious beliefs um, and or, or about their beliefs about religion. It's a obviously very in, uh, intense issue for a lot of people. And this debate that we're about to react to and analyze and talk about um, absolutely fits all of that criteria. Um, so I've seen this debate once before, and it was very interesting. It got my, my brain juices flowing, and so I wanted to watch it together on stream to share some of my thoughts and uh, to use it as a springboard to talk about religion um, on a, uh, on a uh, more constructive level. I think that religion is really important to understand. Uh, in, in America, uh, America is a highly religious nation. There are a lot of religious people. Uh, a lot of those religious people are indeed right-wingers, but there are also a lot of religious left-wing people. Um, and a lot of people who find themselves in financial need often find themselves only able to find help from Christian organizations, from definitively Christian organizations. Christian organizations whose ultimate goal is not just to help people, you know? They're not really just trying to materially help people. They're specifically trying to win over souls for their God. Most of America is evangelical. Most of America's Christian organizations and Christian charities are evangelical. By the core of their beliefs, they want to help people to help win them over to God. And that's concerning. It's concerning to me that um, in a time of, of, uh, of extreme uh, of an extreme yearning for, for purpose in a time of extreme hardship. We have a raging pandemic. Uh, climate change is in intensifying in a lot of areas leading to uh, extreme wildfires in major portions of the United States and a whole bunch of other things. It's a very hard time for a lot of people. A lot of people find themselves being pulled in and ultimately, in my opinion, victimized by extreme Christian groups. So I think it's very important that um, we talk about religion, that, that religion, and, and that we're willing to challenge our presuppositions uh, about religion in every direction, whether it's about new forms of religion or whether it's about the validity of religion uh, at all. I think these are important questions to explore. And I can't say that I have all the answers, though I certainly have a lot of opinions. This conversation, um, I think, is very interesting. And I, I've, been wanting, I've been going back and forth on whether I wanted to review it or not, but I've actually gotten a number of messages about people ask, uh, from people asking me specifically to go over it with the, with the knowledge of my history with religion. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, I, oh wait, wait, I already said that. I already told you all that I grew up in a extreme, uh, extremely fundamentalist Christian cult. I did a video on that. The video will be posted 
in the uh, the chat right over here, but you can also just search Demon Mama's Spiritual Deconstruction. That is a, basically, it's a video essay that I did, essentially, where I tell the whole story of my life growing up in a very extreme Christian church. I talk about how I left it and a lot of my opinions at the time. Um, it's a pretty deep video. I'm very, very proud of it to this day. It's one of the more raw and uh, personal videos I've ever done. I want to read a statement, okay? And, uh... This statement is part of the reason why I decided to uh, to do the. De I decided I ultimately wanted to react to this um, to this debate. Uh, like I said, part of it. I also got a lot of messages of people asking me for my opinion on it. Um, but I really wanted to read read this out and give credit where credit is due because this was something that made me uh, uh, do some do some thinking. Okay, so this is a this is a statement by White Nervosa. For those of you uh, who are familiar with my stream, you know who White Nervosa is. If you are not familiar with my stream, White Nervosa is the uh, amazing leader of White Forest, the co-op that created this amazing website that most of my viewers are watching on right now. Um, I have been I have uh, been connected and friends with White Nervosa for a long time. I really think White Nervosa is a wonderful person. And uh, White Nervosa is one of the people who's been talking about a, a very different perspective on this whole religion thing than most people in the sort of online left are used to. The online left, let's face it, is a predominantly, uh, or at least a vocally very atheistic space. And I think there's reasons for that that are good and bad. Um, a lot of people on the online left um, were were previously a part of like online atheism and part of that is because again in america uh the the religious right is such a huge part of the far right that a lot of people naturally find themselves gravitating towards leftism while pushing back against the extremely choking domination of religious right-wingers in america um, so I just want to read this statement and I want to talk about it a little bit before we watch the actual debate and um, I'll let the statement speak for itself and then I'll commentate afterwards. Okay, so again, this is white nervosa I have a huge amount of respect for white nervosa, but I want to read this public statement real quick this says here My final public statement regarding my faith a deep pain never left as I saw a community I respect suggest that I could easily turn authoritarian or that it's left my ability to reason broken. In my teenage years, I loved debating conspiracy theories and I still do. Faith is an unknowable claim or it isn't faith. Certainly, that raises alarms for people as it can easily reinforce bigotry without any necessary justification otherwise. Yet, I believe that is separate from an attempt to remove all faith. My faith kept me pushing forward through every hurdle. In April 2021, I did a combination of drugs that I knew could easily kill me in exchange for not facing reality. I let Vosh and his community down, a DDoS crippled the site and rendered it unusable. Vosh, at that point, had clearly become a force for good. I do not care about interpersonal conflict. The reality is that at, that, that, at this time and that time, Vosh pushes the window further left and will improve people's lives, lives in very direct ways. I met my partner on VGG. They also had suggested self-harm, and I knew that because of my status, I would be able to get a response from them and attempt to talk them down. I ended up meeting another family member the same way, and truly, when I was able to hug them, it, I was positive that every fault was worth it. My mind is unique in that I am unable to retain long-term memory. Of course, this is different than portrayed in, in media, but due to taking clonopin for over a decade now, I cannot remember my ex fiance's eye color. I cannot remember the food that we would have. I cannot remember the timeline from when I crashed into a brick wall to the time when they gave me the ultimatum. I must choose between, I, I must choose between an addiction or them, and I failed. <clears throat> Excuse me. I love my current spouse, and they absolutely are a better partner as I make them happy for who I am and vice versa. But at the time, I could not possibly choose to keep the only person I loved over a substance I hate. Contextually, this leads into how my faith is necessary to inform my view of people. I assert there is no evil. People must be helped when able. And from there, I've ended with certain family 
that I still uh, cannot believe is there for me as me. My faith predates drugs, meeting my ex-fiance, and knowledge of Twitch or even being a part of any community within that sphere. To suggest my faith has broken me is to suggest that the reason I have those who love me for me was out of delusion. You are absolutely entitled to that belief, but if you cannot understand the offense caused by it with the understanding that my faith is the reason why Vosh, Keffels, Demon Mama, Kanye, Rose Wrist, Xander Hall, Doe, The Surfs, Shark, 300, and many others were given my time and effort without any expectation of reciprocity in any way, then truly I cannot see the world from your perspective. I can see the world from the perspective of someone of someone's belief of QAnon and even Flat Earth, but this is something I cannot understand. Why would one see my faith as harmful? A conclusion that means my work, my affect with the scarce time one has, is nothing but cowardice. One is absolutely entitled to that belief. I wouldn't fault someone for it. I only ask that I not be directed vitriol because of it. For those who are adults, I cannot understand your attempt to take this from me. If you do not think it need be after this, then you are not an anti-theist. If you still do, honestly, I am more attached to reality no matter my beliefs than you. The world is beautiful because of the people in it, the stories told, the progress made. Our goal is to make life easier for those after us. Most are. Even if you think you aren't, all you can ask of yourself is to try. You'd be amazed how far you can go. I love you, heart, heart. So, this is a pretty strongly, a pretty strong and emotional statement from White Nervosa, a very vulnerable statement uh, to make publicly. Um, personally, it certainly made me think about things. Um, now, again, as you know, uh, I, I, have, I have for some time voiced that I, I, have, that I sort of distance, or that I've moved away. I wouldn't say distance myself, but I would say I've moved away from the anti-theist position that was very helpful for me to process the world when I first left religion. Um, and there are still aspects of anti-theism that I have a lot of respect for. There is a, a certain um, there is a certain skepticism that a lot of anti-theists uh, carry with them that I think is very helpful that I think helps overcome uh, that I think can help guide people into overcoming uh, misleading and uh, manipulative ideologies. But there are certain aspects of of anti-theism that I that I find uh, unhelpful or concerning. The reason I wanted to read this statement before we got into this is because I want you to remember something. At the end of the day, all of our political discussions and discourses, all aside, people are people. We are still dealing with real, feeling people, with people who have hearts and emotions, and guess what? That's you too. There is not a single person who is totally divorced from their emotions, nor should there be. Part of the unique experience of being human is progressing through life, is, is processing all of the madness that comes your way and finding meaning and truth in that madness, okay? So I want people explicitly in this conversation, no matter how heated it gets, no matter what your position is, whether you're a dyed-in-the-wool theist or a dyed-in-the-wool anti-theist, to please remember that um, to not essentialize that not all people who are theists and not all people who are anti-theists are a certain way, okay? And also to remember that even if you think that a religion is the stupidest idea ever, that the people who believe in it might have reasons for believing in it that don't make them a bad person, okay? Even if you are, like I said, even if you're a super anti-theist, okay, and you hate you think that religion makes people think in the wrong way, just remember that not every single person is fundamentally flawed just because they believe in religion. And likewise, for those of you who are religious out there, I hope that you will recognize that even, no matter how strong your religious beliefs are, that nonetheless, life has to be lived as a human. And even if you think that somebody, uh, that someone's behaviors don't align with your religion, I would hope that you might be able to extend a, a genuine human olive branch to be able to connect with that person and understand where they're coming from, okay? Now, I know that was a bit of a long, slow introduction to this video, but I think it's important. Uh, I always tell my community, we only raid with love. 
We don't we don't go ar around directing a fuckload of hate even to the people that we don't like. Even the people that we really don't like, we we don't raid. We don't raid or brigade or any of that shit. That's not how we do things. If we want to challenge someone, we challenge them with our ideas. We challenge them with our words. We challenge them politically. We don't do this fucking internet bullshit, okay? So the reason why I wanted to read White Nervosa's statement before all this is because I really want people to realize that there's been a lot of fucking pain that has spiraled out from this conversation and that a lot of people on, and I'm not pointing fingers to any side of this debate, but that there are a lot of, there, there has been a lot of toxicity and vitriol going around and it has had real harm, it has caused real emotional harm to real people. So regardless of where you stand on those issues, um, check it, okay? Check yourself, all right? Because I highly doubt that even if you, like I said, even if you're the most dyed in the wool religious person or the most dyed in the wool anti-theist person, no one involved in this conversation right here, no one in these chats are, uh, no one in these chats are, uh, are, are the type of people that you need to be, uh, that you need to be, you know, going crazy on. None of these people are the leaders of Christian nationalism. None of these people are the, uh, the, the, the hateful, sinful, atheist, satanic worshipers. Besides me, I am an evil demon. You can, you can, I guess you can hunt me if you want. Was this from VGG, the harassment? I have no idea. Uh, I assume that given what White Nervosa said that it was, uh, you know, White Nervosa opened the statement by saying, um, by saying that the community had been severe i don't know that it was i don't know that it was vgg specifically like the website chat um i'm guessing it may have been um but it may have also been like reddit and the reddits are like reddit communities are messy as fuck we all know how reddit works you know people hate follow um people hate follow the hell out of stuff on reddit reddit has like a whole community of hanging out in communities that you hate um and yeah, I, I don't know. I, I have, I, I, I want to talk to White Nervosa more um, about this stuff. Um, I imagine some of it happened on Twitter. I'm, I imagine there was some in VGG chat, but guys, come on. Like, let's keep it in, let's keep it, let's keep it checked, okay? Yes, and by the way, for what it's worth, this is my, this is my personal statement on, on, not on the topic, but on White Nervosa. White Nervosa is, has been so kind and not just kind but incredibly selfless and 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 also really skilled and talented and loving um when i first uh when i first started getting um when i first started getting involved in streaming i was completely overwhelmed by some of the hate that i got and white nervosa was one of the only people who really like sat down and talked to me about it and helped give me some genuine um give give me some genuine feedback uh and not just feedback but but support so i have a lot of um i have a lot of care for um oh i didn't know this wait i didn't see this one oh okay Wait, so is this still up? I'm resigning from VGG and any other implied communities. The hidden replies here demonstrate that I must lie or ignore this. Again, I'm here to shut the fuck up and work, so I shall. Any contact towards me that's not business will be ignored. Oh, no. Wait, I didn't see that. Oh. Hold on a second. Is that still up? Maybe I've missed something. That makes me sad. Clarify for those who may have stumbled upon this. I first put out my spiciest take, which soon after the community was fully on board. Uh, debate followed between Vosh and Ocean when the topic was anti-theism, but there was Mott and Bailey. Uh, I attempted to explain why the comments were offensive. The community still, take, still makes offensive comments. I hope to move past this. It's made clear that no community overlaps here, so I must push through it. I hope to see you on the other side. Pardon my feelings. It's extremely exhausting. ContraPoints put it best. When your community turns against you, where do you have to go? I'm lucky to have family, but it's difficult to convince yourself they aren't just saying what you want to hear. 
this hurt, it'll heal. Okay, like, see, this is why I think, okay. Okay, I see, I see. Sorry to everyone, this wasn't explicit. My feelings are hurt, but I intend to stay in the community. Y'all are amazing, I wouldn't trade it. I don't plan on leaving it. Just be careful in tweeting when you're sad, insomnia. You'll wake up to, to in memorials. Oh, okay, I see. I see, I see. So what she was saying, she's stepping back from the community. She just accidentally, she just accidentally wrote, uh, wrote resigning. Nonetheless, that's still very, that's still really sad. It's still extremely frustrating that, that like a community that you were extremely inter instrumental in helping to build can just like off the cuff be mean. So, you know, let's, we're going to watch this debate and we're going to see where it goes from here. Um, and I have a lot of, a lot of, uh, commentary the meaning in the final tweet was i need a break but it'll be okay okay i see i see all right that makes sense all right shall we watch the debate now this preamble ended up being significantly long longer uh white nervosa um i believe uses she her pronouns like last i checked let me double check i should be very i should be sure about that Any all. Okay. Never mind. Any all. Any all. I'm really not sure, okay? Like, and I'm not really interested in this, uh, in this conversation in, like, pointing fingers at who did this or, wh or who did whatever. Like, I'm not really interested in that. I'm just interested, I'm more interested in talking about the subject and also pointing out, like, the 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 pointlessness of getting to that level over it so anyway without any further without any further preamble let's fucking watch this damn debate okay let's fucking watch it all right yo howdy hey how are you hey, doing hey. i am doing well sorry for the delay in calling you nah you're good thank man. you Rhodes. um I have gotten a message from our mutual friend Surus, uh, calling you a degen and saying that uh, his subathon is still going, and that you are to come on at some point. That's my, my. Yeah, opening. I believe I, I believe I made that promise. Um, Cirrus <laughs> is well aware of the fact that I take forever to respond to messages, though. So I'm sure, I'm sure they've not taken. <laughs> I need this to boost me. this up a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, he and I talked a little bit about this. He said that he mentioned to you. He was also interested in talking to you about the subject, like the anti-theism thing. Um, so, you know, uh, but yeah, I, I guess, do we want to jump right into it or, or, or what? Yeah, hit it up. Here? Cool. Kill me. Um, yeah. So I guess the first thing that I want to open with basically is getting a sense of your position with respect to anti-theism. We haven't talked a whole lot about this. I've seen you talk to other people about it, but I wasn't, I'm not sure like what your stance is. Like if you're describing yourself as an anti-theist, what does that mean? Um, I just don't like any kind of mysticism or superstition. Um, I'm, uh, okay. I, I don't, I don't think we can make any prescriptive statements on, um, metaphysics, uh, outside of the ones that are necessary for basic cognition. So like, um, the, the metaphysical belief in causality, you know, the reliability of our senses, that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I, you have to make those leaps. Otherwise you literally can't participate in the world. You, 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 you would just have to die if you can't accept. Right. It's, we both agree solipsism is not necessarily the most helpful position, I guess. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So like, to avoid yeah. that, I mean, to, you know, anything beyond that, right. You can make basic assumptions, but any, any metaphysical stuff outside of that, I, I completely reject. Um, cause I think it leads people into really dangerous positions where they're okay. capable of making rational utilitarian, um, conclusions based mm -hmm. on information that i don't think is real uh so so like for example if a person believes in some kind of metaphysical thing like a spirit or like a deity you know with a given set of values or principles beliefs something about the world that isn't empirically testable it's possible that they could arrive at a rational conclusion about the world that i would consider immoral based on information they have that i can't argue them out of you can't argue a person out of like a like a metaphysical belief unless you're willing to do that whole like here's a different i find this approach interesting and a little bit odd um with regard to the uh with regard to the idea that like it's about whether you can argue people out of it i mean i feel like there's a lot of things not just 
metaphysical beliefs, but like, I mean, political, like people have political positions that they can't be argued out of because it's, it, it's something that is, that they take as, as essentially fundamentally true. Lots of people, um, who, who believe in non-religious things are, are, uh, are, are regularly incapable of being convinced out of it. It's, um, yeah, I find that an interesting approach. Because, like, I, I feel like there's no, there's never a guarantee that you can argue anybody out of any position, right? Like, I've met plenty of people who, uh, whose beliefs are arguably completely scientific and have no, uh, have no spiritual assumptions or anything like that or, 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 or any mystical assumptions whatsoever. And yet they're completely un unconvincible because they're deeply attached to those beliefs. The difference is that religion has that inherently bad take, DM. Wow. Wait, we're really, we're really, we're really already, this is already happening? Um, people are already going to get weird about this? I don't think that's like a, non-religious people also have beliefs you can't argue them out of. Like, for example, you could not argue me out of believing rape is bad, for instance. Yeah, that's a good example. Wait, here we go. Um, real quick, here's another one, okay? Wait, here's another belief. Here's here's a belief that I think that I think is is one that that could be mm. okay. Let's think about this. What if you were trans in like eighteen fifty? If you were trans in like eighteen fifty, before there was any documentation of trans people existing, before there was any science on it whatsoever you would essentially be making a claim that to most people would seem supernatural. You're basically saying, I feel like I'm a woman. I can't prove it to you. Um, I can't prove it to you, but I believe this deeply. And yet, and yet, like, is that, like, like, is that, is that, like, inherently bad? Is that, like, inherently worse than somebody who now has the science or whatever to back it up i mean hell right now we don't even have all the answers we don't currently have all the answers and we probably never will it might be impossible to for us to actually come to an uh come to an answer uh about gender because it's a matter of identity so i i find that a little bit um i i don't know i don't know that that's necessarily the right approach approach like i don't think anybody could debate me out of my gender identity um ever i think perhaps i could discover new information that might change my interpretation of my gender identity that has already happened i mean at one point i considered myself a binary trans woman and now i consider myself a non-binary trans woman and there's a number of reasons for that um but like nobody argued me out of it there was no argument that happened. In fact, it was literally just introspection. So, hmm. That's, uh, so here's what somebody says. Since the foundation of their information is not able to be uh, disproven, you can't logically win the argument. But isn't that just a frustration though? Like that's not an argument against theism in and of itself, right? Maybe I'm wrong here or I'm missing something here, but that doesn't feel like an actual argument against theism. It just simply seems like a statement of taste. Basically, you're saying, I don't like it because I can't argue you out of it, but nobody can argue me about, out of my gender. And yet I don't think that, I, I think that only insane transphobic conservatives would try to say that like that fundamentally undermines my ability to reason, right? doesn't work. You're comparing specific personal beliefs to the institutions of religion. That's not true. That's not true. I'm not. I'm not I'm not comparing it to the institution of religion. I'm talking I'm comparing two different sets of personal belief. Somebody who is personally who is personally convinced of a belief in God compared to somebody who's personally convinced uh about a belief about themselves. Is this not a whataboutism? Maybe. I mean, it might be. I just wonder if that, I don't think that that's, I don't feel like that's a very strong argument against theism. Um, like the idea that you don't really like that you can't argue, but there's all kinds of non-theistic beliefs that you can't really argue people with. Like, for example, the claim that I am a human. Like, 
if I if I made we could we don't even have to talk about being trans. If if you said I am a human and somebody said no you're not, like how are you possibly how could you ever come to see eye to eye? You're self-identifying as something. You know? Anyway. Your gender identity is your belief based on personal experience. Your gender presentation is your practice. We argue for policies based on this. Well, I, I, I think some people argue for policies. Other people don't. Yeah, or the whole, or the whole xenogender thing, right? Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. I don't want to get, I just, I find this in, an interesting, and I happen to know this is a point that a lot of people stick on. For an interpretation of the Bible type deal, and that's not like a reliable process, especially if a person's um, not an adherent to a, um, like a major structured religion. You know, it could just be kind of a crapshoot on how much their positions can actually be moved. Okay. Um... So is this a is this a position that you have like a policy position on like those are anti theist policies that you would want to enact or is there like, um, or is this just like a rhetorical point? No, I'm, I'm your... pro freedom of religion. I don't think okay. it should be extended to any kind of state persecution. Um, so the yeah, but uh, I guess... I mean, it's like more of an ethical thing, I guess. Okay, so like I I guess my feeling on anti theism is that if it's a position that in which enacting any policy relating to it would be like a violation of human rights why do you subscribe to the position like because i get i get kind of like where you're going with respect to um i i see your i see like your position but i'm wondering that i guess how do you get there well it's, if it's there's a, no if there's no policy position that you can get with it then that without violating human rights then why would you subscribe to that position rather than going some other route I th well, I think it's a cultural shift. Um, I feel the same way about like gender abolitionism. I don't think you can policy your way over to that point. I think you need to gotcha. kind of socially discourage some avenues. I don't think there's any practical or ethical way to enforce anti-theism through the state. Um, I don't. I think. Uh, well, that's very good. I'm I'm very happy to hear that because uh, I think a lot of people. Um, I I I I think a lot of people would be concerned about a state enforcement of that and. Uh, state enforcement of anti-religion looks fucking terrible i don't know if you i don't know if anyone here is familiar uh to the type of religious persecution that goes on in mainland china it's not good um i mean fuck like it's bad it's really bad like there, as in torture waterboarding all kinds of things bad it's literally fascism yeah Infernatrix Sophia says, I think human is a bad example in that case because the categorization of human is only con contingently extended to homo sapiens be based on our conformance to the normative beliefs of the holders of power. Okay, yes, yes. That's true. Yeah, that, okay, that's true. That's true, but it's a little, little bit different approach, but you have a point. Let's continue. Like, we, like we have micro-experiments of this in, like, the... Um... The Soviet and uh, Mao's China's bans on um, on religion, you know, like the right. state atheism type thing, but like it didn't really change anything. Functionally, it didn't change anything, even for the people who deconverted, because for those who didn't practice their religion in secret, a lot of them just started adopting mantras of the state with a religious um, fervor. So it, it ended up not really changing anything. It's like a long term cultural project. So I guess if you're if you're gonna have like that kind of I guess I, this isn't necessarily where I was planning on going, but like, if you're going to have that kind of behavior, what's your goal with anti-theism then? Like, what's the end result that you're, you're wanting to go for there? Same as with gender abolitionism. It's just something that I care about ethically. I don't think that it's possible to like vote in a guy who will make a big change or whatever. Um, okay. I just, it's like, a, it's like a guiding set of principles, right? Because there are lots of things that I think are bad that we shouldn't do that I also don't think you can really legislate against. Like a lot, sure. for, for like a lot of abusive behavior that you would do to a partner, the only stuff that crosses the threshold into like potentially illegal, like goes into like physical abuse or financial crimes, you know. But mm -hmm. you can never make gaslighting illegal. That'd be insane. Can you imagine trying to? Yeah, run no, I, I feel that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like you, you yeah. can't you can't meaningfully legislate on that. But obviously, like you know, culturally, we can still move towards the idea that you should treat your partner with respect. So uh, I guess let me get into my position then on anti-theism because I think that I'm I'm in opposition to 
largely what you've expressed. I think that your position is a little bit more reasonable than what I've heard some people say. Uh, so I've encountered a number of different perspectives on anti-theism, one of which would be like the lowering the number of religious people in the world and elevating the number of atheists in the world, for example. Um, and I think that that's, that gets into dodgy territory. Are you, is that, does that describe where you're at or is that not describe where you're at? I mean, through a cultural project, right? There are people making the choice to not be religious or the rejection of religious principles or any kind of spiritualism, but not through any yeah. like state project. I, I mean, ideally I would want to live in a fully secular world. Yeah. But I mean, I'm very happy. I, I will say I'm very, very happy with Vosh's firm disavowal of using state programs to condition the minds of people. Uh, I think this kind of is a little, I think this is a little bit different than some of his other beliefs. I think he's talked about like, joke a little bit like tongue in cheek, a little bit about like anarchist re-education centers, but like state power to condition the beliefs of people is generally a extreme, it's like, it's always an extremely dark and horrifying project. So I'm glad that he's, I'm glad that he's speaking out against that at the very least. I, I, yeah. I don't, I don't even know if that's necessarily possible just in like, I a, don't either. Yeah. Like a, just yeah. like a, a, a mathematical sense. And I think any attempt to do so through policy or force would be more destructive than whatever benefits you could possibly extract from it. Yeah. I, so I think that also the cultural enforcement issue winds up being, not just as bad, it's like, it's just a different form of the same problem. Um, cause you wind up just like shaming people arbitrarily. I think that, uh, let me suggest like a different approach. Cause I think that anti-theism stands in contrast to another social strategy of pluralism. Um, and I, th I think that that's a better approach when it comes down to coalition building. I think that when anti-theism is kind of like a scorched earth, Rhodes, Rhodes says, a lot of chatters seem to be conflating religious people and proselytizers. That is going to be, I don't want to spoil, but I can tell you that that is going to be a major part of this conversation, okay? So keep that in mind. I think that's going to be a big thing we're going to talk about here. Earth approach. And because when you're setting yourself up as an anti to something, it's going to result in like toxic behavior. And the question with that is going to be, is the toxicity that that kind of cultural narrative promotes, is that going to be, is that going to be hitting the kind of people that you want to hit with that toxicity? So for example, if you're an anti-fascist, you're going to be hitting fascists with toxicity. What's bad about that? Fucking nothing. So, okay, fine. If you're, uh, with an anti with an anti theist position, though, you do wind up hitting a bunch of theists with toxicity. And if you're interested in coalition building, that's going to be hitting a lot of people that are like on your side on most issues, with everything except for like their religious belief. I agree. So well, I think the idea is that the anti part, um, the anti part of anti theism, uh, indicates a more militant position, like specifically that you are not just anti. Uh, you're not just yourself, like, uh, no, you know, saying, no, I don't agree in this, but the anti-theism is saying, like, like being an anti-theist is like, no, I think that theists are intrinsically harmful. I oppose them. I want them to be defeated overall, e whether it's as a cultural project or otherwise. I think that the, what, what Ocean Keltoy is speaking to here is the anti, the, the anti part of anti-theist. What makes you an anti versus an atheist? Um, and there is, I, I think there is a genuine thing there because the anti-theism says, okay, well, if you ask what's different between anti-theism and atheism, the, the, the idea is the atheist does not necessarily, uh, say that, you know, all theism is bad, but rather that they just don't partake themselves. And they might have very principled reasons for why they don't partake. Whereas the anti-theist Generally, the anti-theist position is that they are taking uh, a stance against religion in totality. And what Ocean Keltoy here is saying is that he has concerns, or they have concerns. Sorry, I, I, I should probably check that. Um, Ocean Keltoy's. Does anybody know Ocean Keltoy? I thought I thought it was he him, but I could be wrong. Hold on, I just want to make sure Ocean Keltoy's pronouns. Ocean Keltoy, let's see. He, him. Okay, I was right. Whew. Okay, good. Oh, wait, wait. Ocean Keltoy, are you the real Ocean Keltoy? That's really, really cool. Thanks for coming by.
Uh, let me get you a creator tag. Hold on one second. Damn. It, welcome to the Demon Mama chat. Uh, uh, I have a lot of thoughts. I've been thinking about this debate for, uh, what? How long has it been? It's This debate has been up for, uh, for, like, a, a solid, like, week or two. Um, yep, that's you. All right, there you go. You have a fancy name now, Ocean Keltoy. Um, yeah. Uh, yay! Um, welcome to the chat. Anyway, uh, I've been thinking this debate I, was I, it was very interesting to me. This will be the second time I've watched the debate, and me and my partners have actually discussed this debate, uh, like, extensively. Um, so I just want to say, like, uh, y'all had a really, really thought-provoking conversation, and we've all been talking about it for a while. So I, I went back and forth on whether I wanted to react to it on stream, and I decided after multiple people messaged me that they wanted to hear my perspective on it, um, as someone who comes from an a from from uh, you know my background in having grown up in an, a fundamentalist cult, uh, I have a lot of thoughts about it. So anyway, I, I'm glad I'm glad that you decided to swing by and please feel welcome. Uh, uh, yeah, so you don't know what to expect. Well, Pansabi, I can tell you. I will say it doesn't stay this calm. I I don't want to spoil anything, but anyway, let's uh, let's jump back into it. Yeah, I'd be open to that, Ocean Keltway, absolutely. So for coalition building, it's always a better idea to spread the net as far as possible. Mm -hmm. But obviously, there, there have to be considerations within that, right? Like, so yeah. I believe in coalition building with people, like lots of people who, with moral positions that I disagree with. I mean, I, right. I've gotten in trouble with the left for believing, like, should, like, edgy, libertarian-leaning kind of racist white dudes have an opportunity to join the left on some issues? Like, yeah, absolutely, because better to have them on our side than not, you know? But I wouldn't, I wouldn't then think, like, well, we shouldn't exclude or criticize those ideas because it could be more effective to coalition build with them. Um, sure. and, and I do think that, that, that spiritual thinking is harmful. I just think it's indirectly harmful. Um, okay. It's not harmful for what it is. It's harmful for what it enables. So it, it, it doesn't necessarily fit. Because how often when it comes to like coalition building, do you consider metaphysics, right? It's a little, it's, it's kind of a unique case. Um, the whole... Oh, uh, sorry. Here go Ocean Keltoy. Uh, it's on your profile page. If you go back to the homepage, demonmama.com, and then click uh, your account, it, in your account, you'll be able to set whatever you'd like. Oh, I believe you, Nuts. I saw some of it when I watched this. Yeah. I, I find this odd, like, that, that, that Bosch believes that spirituality uniquely opens you to like irrationality when I don't know, like, I feel like there's tons of totally irrational, um, spirit, like non-spiritual people, um, and non like irrational, like, or, or irrational non-spiritual people are like all over the place. So I don't know that you can, I, I think that, okay, what I, here's what I should say. It, I think that if you're going to make the argument that spiritualism or that spirituality opens you up uniquely, you have to be able to demonstrate that. Yeah, exactly. It needs to be, I feel like you have to be able to demonstrate that it's unique. And that's actually, interestingly, I know this is a little bit, a little bit strange, but this is actually a debate that I had a long time ago with, uh, some of you might remember Prime Kai's. Um, I actually went on a panel and had a huge debate, like after the panel, specifically about this and one of the things that bothered me was that i felt like having you having formerly been an anti-theist or at least formerly I, I wasn't like public i wasn't a public figure but i had anti-theistic beliefs the um the i i found myself getting in multiple debates where i could not i could not find the argument i could not find the substantiation that spirituality uniquely leaves people open and uh the, and instead i as i look deeper into it um there are uh as i look deeper into it uh, there was in fact m more and more i seem to find examples of people who are not irreligious and and not spiritual being just as irrational 
as people who were spiritual. And furthermore, um, furthermore, it seemed to me like there are plenty of religions where irrationality is not the like end conclusion, but rather that it seems to emanate from fundamentalism, from uh, dogmatism, that it tends to emanate from hyper traditionalism, from these are like traditionalism and dogmatism, that rigidity seems to be what drives people to be the most unconvincible, the most irrational, the most inflexible. But I obviously, I think we're gonna get more into it, but I, I find this, this claim of like the unique status of spirituality being like an irrationalizing trait, a little bit hard to, to justify. Like issue with religiosity. Um... And my, my goal isn't necessarily to like shame people because you can't you can't okay. shame people out of religion. Um, I, I God, uh, maybe one in a thousand. I'll have to read up know. on that's that not, Inferno Tricks. Thank you. It's not reliable. Um, but I, I <laughs> you know, it's so consider it like a non pragmatic position to hold. But I Han Sabi says, uh, religion. Uh, he he seems to believe that religious belief is categorically irrational. Not every belief a religious person has would fall into the religious category. I mean, that's true. But what I, I'm not saying that that's the case. I'm not saying that all religious people that like anti-theists claim that. Uh, what I'm what I'm worried about is this idea that spirituality is a uniquely like corrupting factor. The the uniquely corrupting factor I believe has to be substantiated or else it doesn't really hold any water. I still think it's important. Like you still have to keep your end goals in mind, right? Um, and that stuff's so pretty I, dangerous. Like, okay. Um... I think that when you're talking about an end goal that is like entirely secular, that winds up being like effectively we'll cultural see. genocide at that point, because you're looking at an end goal of eliminating indigenous practices, uh, several religions across the world <laughs> of various types. Yes. Um, ultimately, right? Like that's it's a it winds up being like a colonial position. Uh, sure. I mean, there are okay. plenty of other. This seems, this seems a bit firing far on Vosh's side. Um, let's keep going. There are things that I want, like, culturally eradicated, like, um, like um, uh, <clears throat> patriarchal tribal structures. I think those are pretty okay. ethical. I mean, if that means eventually the stigmatization of a bunch of indigenous cultures, then yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, there are plenty of cultures or cultural elements that I think need to be... Um, Critique. And just spiritual. Well, Vorbuddy says it seems like he's biting the bullet, but I don't know if he is because didn't he just say that like didn't he just say that he doesn't really want to like legislate this? But then, but then he then maybe I'm misunderstanding. I want to give I want to give Vosh the benefit of the doubt here because I think this is the early stages of the conversation. But I I I find it odd that that he would be willing to bite the bullet shortly after saying he doesn't actually want to enforce this by the state but he's okay with the idea of a cultural, like culturally eliminating these things, even if it, it takes the form of like a colonial practice. I, I feel like maybe that might've been a misspeak. Well, that's, let's see. Belief is, is one of those for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, my position on that is when you're looking at, I, I'm a big fan of looking at uh, religion kind of like in a, in a rational way. And I think that somebody can be a theist and rational and an atheist and rational. And I think that that's exemplified by the number of people that are in philosophy of religion who are on both sides of this issue. And so when you're looking at like an end goal and saying spiritual beliefs bad, I think that in order to have that kind of thing, you need to, you need to show that like the spiritual belief is the reason why it's bad. And I, I don't think that's the case. I think that the cause usually when we're criticizing religion is in some other place other than mere God belief rather than, um, you know, something else like somebody being an authoritarian and being religious as well. And then utilizing that religion for authoritarian purposes, for example. Well, the issue is that if a person's bad behavior is rooted in some way, Ada Stardust says he has legit said before that he thinks that indigenous religious practice being let go is actually a good thing because religion bad. Um, I would disagree. I, I don't know. I would, I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I can't think of a single moment where he said something like that. But if he did say something like that, that would be something I disagree with. Um, largely because like a lot of indigenous religious practice is 
is understood very differently than the way that a lot of like Christians would understand religious practice. Uh, you know, American Christians, Americans in general, even American atheists are very steeped in Christianity. Um, and um, indigenous religious practice rarely uh, resembles that of like Christianity. I think we're going to end up, I think there's a portion of this conversation where we'll be able to talk about this more. Um, but yeah, let's continue. In a spiritual or metaphysical justification, there's literally nothing you can do to argue them out of it. Um, it becomes completely impossible unless you want to adopt their own moon logic and just take a roll of the dice and hope. Javier Valenzuela says, it boils down to this. It brings nothing good and novel to the table. Each religion is one more line in the sand for tribalism to thrive off of. But Javier, Javier Valenzuela, that's true about everything. That's true about every single disagreement in the world. Every single disagreement in the world is a line in the sand, especially an ethical or political disagreement. It is a fact of our existence that we disagree with each other and we will come to different conclusions. Um, oh, I haven't seen this one. I don't think I've ever seen this debate. When was this one from? Hold on, let me see this real quick. When was this one from? Oh, that was from this year. Maybe we'll listen to that one also at some point. So. This is the reasoning for anti-theism. Why are we not also anti-ethics and anti-politics? Yes, I agree. See, that's that's a um that's a, that's an issue that I have with this, which is that like there are plenty of political, like non-religious, political, ethical, ideological positions that separate and can drive wedges between people, often irrationally. Anyway. Uh yeah, let's let's continue. But it their brain ends up like reconciling those new pieces of information in a way that's mm -hmm. favorable to you. Um, but there's no real way around it. I mean, a big example of this right now would be the fact that um, a huge, like a block with a ton of political power in this country is fundamentalist Christians. And fundamentalist right. Christians often believe that the global warming isn't anthropogenic. It's caused by God as part of the end times that predicate the rapture. And the rapture is something they're looking forward to. They have been for a very long time. So they either don't care about or actively kind of root on climate change, something that would kill hundreds of millions of people charitably um, because it suits their metaphysical, you know, like morals. And there's nothing I can do to push them out of that outside of like. There would never be anything you could do to push them out of that because it's not even a belief. It's not even it's not just a belief that stems from religion, though. And that is true, by the way. Uh, a lot of Christians see the arrival of climate change. They don't. They don't call it climate change. They believe that it's the end times. Uh, the reason for this is that, and I can explain this. Here's where I can. This is where. Yeah, look at this. Oh, this is where I can actually weigh in with some help. Uh, the reason why a lot of fundamentalist Christians do not care about climate change is because in Revelation, a book of the Bible that uh, is, a, is taken to be prophetic about the future, in Revelation it is predicted that, that, that Jesus will return to the earth to rapture up the, uh, the believers when there is a time of unprecedented natural disasters. So Christians believe that climate change is functionally... Um, it, it's it's like literally it's inevitable in their mind and that that is a sign when it gets bad that's a sign that god is coming to that god is going to come lift out the non-believers and then the end times will begin so that's where that comes from um but that that belief is not just because of religion there are lots of christians who do not believe that like a lot um in fact like a lot of catholics don't believe that um, because they have different views on the rapture and different views on the end times. Um, there's a lot of Christians who don't believe that. A lot of American Christians do believe that, but it's not really, um, it, that's literally more of a popular, uh, inter like a, an issue of popular interpretation of, of how specific popular preachers and movements have promoted that idea. And it's also very political because it's reinforced by oil, by literal oil barons who will give money to churches that are favorable to them. So there's a there's a twofold thing. It's not just because of like, and I can't believe I'm mildly defending Christians here, but um, first of all, a lot of Christians do not believe that. And secondly, um, 
the Christians who do are often uh, part of the movement that is heavily funded by oil billionaires who, like I said, if, you're, if you are a preacher and you show that you're willing to, to preach against climate change, then you all of a sudden get a bunch of oil money. So, yeah. Beliefs do inform actions. I agree. I agree. Let's continue. Pulling out a Bible and hoping that I can, like, beat them to death with the right scripture. Like, actually, no, not that, not that. But you can't really yeah, argue yeah. them out of it. And that's very dangerous, you know. Religion gives... This is another area where I think that Vosh is slightly wrong. Um, the, fu the, fu the truth is, you can't, you, you can't argue them out of it. But that's, it's not entirely true that, that that, like, that's not entirely true. It's just that the type of debate that you have to engage a Christian in is very different. Um, and yes, sometimes it is totally impenetrable. Certain types of Christianity um, are very, very heavily indoctrinated. I talk about this all the time on my show, that there's like a shell made around the brain that nothing can, can, can penetrate. But the fact that there are so many types of Christians that don't have the same beliefs as the fundamentalists proves that there actually are arguments that can work. It's just that atheists don't know them. That's part of the problem. Um, and some of that is, is totally valid because, you know, atheists shouldn't, like, it's not every atheist's responsibility to, like, be able to, to, to argue with a Christian. But, but the fact of the matter is there are often arguments that can convince, um, that can convince Christians and also, and all kinds of other religious people, but specifically Christians. It's just they are very different than the arguments that you or I are used to seeing on this platform. Um, and certain people, it is just very difficult to reach. But yeah. So there's, there's, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's continue. It's a supernatural pretext to existing justifications it allows people to dress up irrational arguments. in fact no you know what i'm going to demonstrate this i'm going to make right now i am going to make a christian argument uh uh in favor of of uh of 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 take of believing in climate change and also uh and it, it won't even be hard watch this in genesis the lord tells us that we have dominion over the earth, that humans have the ultimate final say, the ultimate stewardship over the planet earth. From the very first book of the Bible, our holy text, God tells us that it is our responsibility to care for the earth. We know that God set the planet in motion, that God hung the stars in the sky, that God hung the planet in space. He hung the firmament. firmament. And he tells us that it is our job to care for it. We can never know when Christ will return. As Christ himself says, he will return like a thief in the night. And as a thief in the night, even you, the most faithful, will not expect his coming. So you cannot act as though climate change is not important. You cannot pretend as though the rapture is just around the corner because... He will come like a thief in the night when you least expect him. To shirk your God-given responsibility in the very first book of the Bible, to shirk your God-given responsibility to care for the earth is to spit in the face of the God, your, of, of the Lord, your God. You must not do this. It is essential that we as Christians take care of the planet that God has so put into our hands no matter what, no matter when we think the end times are, no matter how severe it gets, we as Christians must fight even harder for a better planet to care for this in a way that God would look at us with pride. Like a father to their child, we should take care of the gift that has been given to us. Amen, my brothers, sisters, and thembies. There you go. So do you see? I, I didn't even, I, this is all from memory. I haven't gone to church in a decade and I can remember all of these aspects that would, that 
I believe would probably be very convincing to a lot of Christians. It is possible to create arguments for these things. It's just sometimes very difficult and, and fundamentalists, as it turns out, are, are a particular type of Christian, a particular type of religious person that are very difficult to, to uh, very, very difficult to, um, you know, uh, to, to grapple with. Yeah, so it's one of those things. Hey, good to see ya. Clara, good to see ya. All right, let's get back to this debate real quick, shall we? Let's get back to this. I just wanted to show you that it is actually possible to put together biblically based arguments if you so desire it. It's just, you gotta know when, you know, I don't know, you gotta know, you gotta know when's the right time, et cetera, et cetera, okay? All right. That was a heck of a sermon for a demonic figure. Okay. I told you when I was younger, my parents and myself, we were, I was on the track to become a preacher. Okay. And by the way, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the stewardship argument is an argument that has influenced many, many, uh, levels or many, many types of Christianity historically. Anyway, let's continue. It's um, and make them rational through the addition of extra factors that can only be justified metaphysically. Stuff like that is really, really, really dangerous. And that, to me, is the underlying issue. There are smart religious people and rational religious people. Einstein was, you know, religious. You know, there's, there's a lot of that. But the religiosity is always itself irrational, much as in the same way that intelligence is highly compartmentalized. You can My, have people who are very smart. Um, one, one second, my chat. Yeah, if anybody can uh, cut that. Please, that would be a great that would be a great short. In fact, if Danny, Danny, if you're here, there we go. Bam. All right, we'll get that happening. All right. Anyway, let's continue. That is like is freaking out at me and okay. saying we we skipped rational much as in the same way that intelligence is highly compartmentalized you can my, have people who are very smart um what's one second my chat is like is freaking out at me and okay. saying we we skipped introductions um I'm so, yeah i i uh hear your point and i want to address them uh and we might have to to retread that ground a little bit but um i do want to let i guess all y'all know i am pagan i'm not a christian um so i'm a polytheist youtuber that does uh you know, a lot of content around um, paganism and philosophy and that kind of stuff. So I'm here and I make a lot of the same criticisms that you just made against certain forms of religion and, and, uh, and even paganism. But so it's the logic, right? It's the um, it's the spiritualism underlying it all. Um, you know, e even if you change. Question is religiosity inherently. Inherently irrational hmm i don't think so and and the reason well here's the thing maybe okay this is a very difficult question like religiosity is it an irrational belief um i don't know because, okay, it depends on how you define rational, right? Because I would say that, uh, that someone who all evidence pointed them towards a belief in God, you know, all knowable evidence at the time pointed them towards a belief in God, that that in and of itself would, you know, might, that, I, I think that could be considered a rational conclusion that they say, I've seen this thing, I interpret it like this, and therefore, boom. And I think there's all kinds of non-religious beliefs that we have to do this for. So I don't know. I don't know if you can. I don't know. I think it's really, really hard to say that religiosity in and of itself is an inherently irrational belief. Because I don't even think religiosity ne necessarily demands a belief in the supernatural, right? Because there are religions 
Well, I guess it does because it it, it presumes the existence of 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 spirits or some sort of persistent. Hmm. Not everything that can be justified is inherently not rational. Yeah, that's why I said it's important on what you mean by rational, right? Because, like, if you define... I don't know. I don't know. I think that's very difficult. I Keep in mind also... Uh, keep in mind also that that like in this conversation there was an admit there was an admission that there are certain irrational beliefs that Vosh believes are absolutely necessary so everyone if that's true if he believes that there are essential irrational beliefs that that we all must make the irrational belief in like the existence of the world or whatever then wouldn't that put everyone in the same state as a religious person if everyone has to assume an irrational belief No, I think empathy is really important, nuts. I think empathy is incredibly important. Anyway, let's keep listening. The religion we'll itself, there. the belief in any kind of spiritual or metaphysical, like, force that can't be empirically accounted for, I mean, then you could justify whatever. Believing in a soul, for example, is very dangerous. If a person believes in a soul or reincarnation or an afterlife or whatever, their weight on death is going to be very different than what a secular person's weight on death is going to be. That's like a that's a moral uh, calculation that just gets totally fucked up by the introduction of a lot of, you know, um, mystical shit. So, okay. Um, as I mean, it's true that it will change. I mean, I think that's obviously true, but I don't know that... Um, I, I don't know... Um, I don't know that they get fucked up necessarily. You don't fear death as much as you might? Yeah, but there's lots of people who don't fear death for all kinds of reasons. Like, for example, okay, here's what I mean. Okay, ready? There's two separate ways to look at the eternal soul, right? If when you die, it's all over, there's no more pain, there's no more awareness, you might, uh, you might be uh, you might be a little more willing to uh, end your life if you're in extreme pain because you're, you know that's the end of it. There's no more pain. You know there's no more persistence. If you've done lots of horrible things, maybe, you might be more willing to end your life because that gets you out of the repercussions of those horrible things. Whereas if you believe there's a soul, there are multiple ways in which you can, um, there are multiple ways in which you can interpret that you could say well it's no big deal if i die because my soul will live on but that really depends on the flavor of your religion right because in many religions when you die your soul could go somewhere bad your soul could be reborn into a different position i mean hell in like hinduism and even some forms of buddhism uh there's a belief in reincarnation right and reincarnation is affected by your actions so death might actually be it's very scary if you have an eternal soul, if you believe that you know you haven't you haven't efficient you haven't like sufficiently lived well enough, and your next life is is going to be bad as well, so I, I don't know. Like I think that um, yeah, I don't know. I I do agree that it affects it, but I don't know that it just like I don't know. You can say that it like well, let's see how this goes. I feel like this 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 to topic is like uh. It comes back again. Let's as far see. as soul belief, wait, were you saying this is a problematic part of soul belief? Well, it, it necessarily cheapens death. It has okay. to because ah, this is where I disagree with Vosh. It, right now here. it means that you, there, it's not an end to everything. If you believe in reincarnation, you might think killing an unfortunate person might actually be morally right because you're sparing them that life and sending them to a to another one. But you could also believe that killing someone in order to send them into another life is an intrinsically bad belief. I think he's wrong on this. I don't think that, I, I don't think you can substantiate the idea that the existence of a soul cheapens death. Like, like not at all, right? Um,
Yeah, I don't know. That sounds like it would be very difficult to uh, do. Like, because, okay, keep in mind that some people... Okay, so let me get... Again, let me give some examples of this. Uh, some people believe that uh, that that death has to be treated with like a, a with a religious level of importance. I mean, hell, there are there are re many religions in the world that have specific burial practices because of how important uh, how important and how sacred uh, the concept of death is in that religion. And I don't mean like death cults. I mean religions that basically say, oh my God, when somebody dies, their soul is locked into a certain place. And I think also that I think also that it's possible if you don't believe in a soul to have a cheapened view of death. I mean, I think lots of lots of non-believers uh, look at people like numbers and don't think about that. I don't think I really don't think that Vosh has the the data on hand to back this up, um, because I just think there's too much variety. Yeah, I think a lot of fundamentalist Christians have a have a uh, ugly ugly view on death but um but i don't think that i i really don't think you can claim that all like religion the belief in a soul necessarily cheapens death because every religion has different parameters for what the soul is okay that's partially true in furnitrix sophia Rat Ratatoskar, DM, you don't have a soul. I have a lot of souls. I have a lot of souls. I've been gathering souls my whole life. I'm a demon. I am the soul keeper. And if you're and if you're if you're not good, if you don't donate to this thing, I can torture your soul, make bad things happen to you. <laughs> Let's continue. Okay, so I've got a couple of distractions going on. I guess. Uh, as far as like the soul is concerned, I'm heathen. I hold that uh, the soul is in multiple parts and that as one dies, that breaks apart and it can be considered the end. Uh, I'm not necessarily against the idea of like reincarnation or any of that kind of shit. And, but at the same time, I don't see that as necessarily like a harmful belief. One of the, the things that I got into with respect to history on the belief of the soul and afterlife and that kind of shit I, I'm agnostic on the afterlife. I don't think that you can reasonably... It, afterlife is different than even God belief, in my opinion. I think that you, there's less of a case for afterlife than there is a, of a case for uh, deities. But at the same time, I think that I don't have an issue with traditionally holding to an afterlife view of some sort. But it's, it's dangerous, that being right? Said, like, you could be like well, really no, dangerous if you're convinced. I don't think that it's dangerous inherently. I think that you can wind up creating a dangerous narratives around it, though. And I think that that's... Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point from Ocean Keltoy. A lot of it is the narrative around the thing. If you believe in reincarnation, then you might, you might actually, depending on the types of narratives that you construct around that belief, depending on the conclusions you come to, not everyone's going to come to the same conclusions. Many people who believe in reincarnation might believe that their actions are very important because their actions in this life will affect how what how their next life will go and the lives of everyone they're connected to i don't think that um i think that's a very good point that there's like a lot of different ways of looking at reincarnation and that the narrative that's constructed around reincarnation is the more important part even even if you don't necessarily uh even if the con even if you have different conclusions i think that it's it's i think it's fair to acknowledge that narratives around these things are a little bit more important than the thing itself right Anyway, let's continue. True with a lot of things. Well, and I think that if you start saying that you're against everything, that in order to have that, if you're against everything, they can have dangerous narratives around it. You're going to be banning a hell or not banning, but you're going to be trying to be culturally against a hell of a lot more than religion. Politics, for example, politics and is something you can build tons of dangerous narratives around. You can build dangerous narratives around the form organization of government. Well, wait, but there, the, the, the difference you know, isn't just, can it be used for bad? It's, mm -hmm. Can it produce in a person a conclusion that can't be argued against? So yes. For a political, Politics? hell yeah. Well, no, no, because as long as a person is basing all their judgments off of empirics and your axioms are aligned, um, you can you can reason people out of arguments theoretically. But if a person believes there's a god, and theoretically being the operating word there, theoretically there is no like 
I I do not believe that there is like a ideal like like that there is a certain combination of words that will convince someone of anything. I don't think that's how it works. Like I don't think that there's like a right answer that theoretically is doing a lot of work there because I think there's lots of people who just, you know, there, there's just deep disagreements about the way things are that can't be resolved by like saying the right answers. I don't think that's how I don't I don't know. I this is this goes into an area where I don't know that I have the knowledge to be able to say like how does human decision making work, but I don't know that Vosh does either here. I feel like this is a bit of a jump. Saying that like you know, theoretically, if you if you are both empiricists that you can argue each other out of anything, but that's not necessarily true. People get stubborn for all kinds of reasons. Yeah. Believes that God is telling them to kill. There's no moral argument you can make against that person. There's no benefit to I, believing I disagree in, with that. in the spirit. Yes, I agree with. I just. I. I think I'm going to agree with Ocean Keltoy here. So there's not like a, a thing you get that you don't get through rational or empirical thought, but you do gain the ability to obfuscate real empirical moral judgments mm -hmm. um, with spiritual factors. So. Uh... Historically, we do have some kind of like gates that are built up around that kind of subject. And uh, there's a couple of historical thinkers that I want to kind of toss your way with respect to this conversation. And I think that this is where I get. Yeah, people do tend to double down when challenged, uh, but I don't know. I don't I don't know all the exact details about that. I know that a lot of a lot of people confronted directly about their beliefs will double down but i think they can maybe be open to changing their mind over time um and the other thing about this i wanted to say real quick is that uh i i don't think it's true that there's no argument that you can make to somebody who's convinced that god wants you to kill them and um just to use an example um of just to use an example I will do another brief sermon. God told you to kill someone? Have you, my brother, have you not listened to the, to the, to the story of Abraham and his child Isaac? Isaac, who the angels told Abraham to sacrifice on the, on the, uh, on the altar, only for God to intervene and say, do not kill your son. All I wish to see you is your faith. I do not wish to see blood shed. Uh, there's one way you could approach this. Uh, but, but, but I will agree that there are a lot of positions that people can work themselves into that can be inflamed by religious indoctrination that can be very difficult to reach people. And not just, and it, but it's not just a matter of whether you can reach them rationally. You can't reach them at all. Um, you can't reach them emotionally either. That's part of the deal with indoctrination. Indoctrination makes you resistant to not just rationality, but also any sort of emotional connection. In fact, there's no, it, there's a very, very, there's, we just, wait a minute, hold on. We just spent earlier today talking about why cults isolate people socially. The reasons, the, the reasons that, that, um, that cults isolate people is it becomes easier to insulate that person emotionally and make them resistant to outsiders because they're continually re uh, continually reinforced by the people around them and taught to be scared of the outsiders. So it's not just rationality that's affected by indoctrination. It's both emotion, it's it's emotion, it's social social pressures, all kinds of things. Matthew McConaughey with the ten dollars. I feel like Vosh uses his bachelor's degree in sociology as if it's a PhD way too much. Maybe I don't know. That seems. Thank you for the dono, but I can understand that perspective. But I don't know. I think I think so far Vosh I, personally, I think Vosh has made a couple of arguments that maybe are a little bit too bold or or cavalier. But I don't think that he's like. I don't think that he said anything super like super super arrogant or whatever. Oh, Ocean Keltoy, I don't think there's any, I don't think anybody came in here thinking you were an idiot. At least that's not the way I tend to do these things. Let's continue. Anti-theism doesn't necessarily work as much as a pluralist approach. That if you're going to be criticizing religion and taking a pluralist standard, you're going to be able to criticize those things 
in a way that is going to appeal to people that maybe even are uh, ignoring empiricism in some way, which I'd argue that most people do anyway. I think that if you're outside of religion, there's a lot of people that will say that they are, are into empiricism, but generally aren't. That's most true. people, a lot of people don't think rationally generally. I've, I've, I, that's my opinion. Um, and I think that irrational or irrational narratives can appeal to people who aren't religious or are religious. It's the religion part doesn't necessarily predict one way or the other. It's, uh, but if you hold a pluralist narrative and say, instead of an anti-theist narrative, then you're going to be able to start building standards with respect to how we engage with other people. Somebody saying that, you know, their God wants to kill, other, wants them to kill other people is going to be anti-pluralist. So if we're thinking with a, pl a pluralist approach, then that person can easily be uh, ethically argued out if they're in based a society on, that's, that what strengthens pluralism. Uh, so pluralism... Uh, Nuts, what the fuck? I actually find myself agreeing with you. What the hell? What is is hell frozen over? It feels too hot. A focus on empiricism is a cop-out. It's not a real argument. I agree. Reason being that empiricism is in and of itself highly dependent on the assumptions, right? Like, have we forgotten that most of the, most of the empiricists, most of the founders of empiricism were disgusting racists? Uh, empiricism is extremely, extreme, is, is completely and utterly reliant on your, uh, on your greater assumptions about ethics morality and the collection of data empiricism is is empiricism is is not the answer here yeah um is a set of here i'm gonna send this okay, to you fashion. on discord I've got, but... <laughs> okay i think that might be my favorite frozen emoji i think the frozen hell jam might be my favorite frozen emoji holy shit that's so good it looks so funny what the fuck? Oh. Uh, only a little bit, Rhodes, but I would love to. Let's continue. Well, this, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm familiar with the concept. The problem is that you're, you're building a house on a rotting foundation. Like, you can arbitrarily develop a set of moral beliefs that align with mm -hmm. mine through religiosity, but I don't really value those beliefs that you've arrived at because they're they're built on on shaky ground. Depending okay, on what so your spiritual beliefs are. Things that I want to send you about pluralism are are constructed by an atheist activist. That's. I I think this is I think, I think some of this is true. I I I think some of this there's some truth in this like that that like some Christians come to the right conclusions but they come there by a lot of fucked up ways. But it also doesn't this kind of um. Doesn't this kind of disagree with Vosh's usual position where he's like, I don't really care. Uh, I don't really care what type of leftist you are. I just care that you are a leftist. Like, I just care that leftism is advanced. I've heard Vosh say that many times. So, uh, and also the same is true about empiricism. Um, empiricism is also, can also very easily be built on rotten foundations. For example, if you assume that race is a real construct, you will come to incredibly flawed conclusions based on empiricism. He's talking about moral luckiness. Yeah, but like, isn't moral luck kind of more like a joke? Like, I didn't, I didn't think the, the morally lucky argument, was, I thought that was more of like a, a quip as opposed to like a serious position. Fine, I'll still disagree with them. Um, Why? Well, they're holding it without any. It's an ethical system. I don't have. I to think agree that the, the criticisms that you're putting forward atheists. on the criticisms you're point, putting forward against religion are ethical. No, right? the, no, the problem. No. They're not. They're not ethical. It's not that religious people are necessarily less ethical. It's the system. Mm -hmm. They've opened themselves up to non-empirical information. They they trust things based on faith. As soon as you start doing that, you introduce factors into ethical decision making that can't be accounted for and can't be reasoned against. Um, there's no, there's no like backbone to it. I think a lot of people are irrational, even secular people. I recognize that, but there are yeah. ways to address that through education. You can't counter with religiosity education because even if a person is highly educated, a religious belief that aligns them with different sets of axioms, or God forbid, if they're one of those types who thinks that anything God does is no- Wait, but we know that's not true though. 
But 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 wait, we know that's not true. And also, I want to I want to critique Vosh here a little bit. Vosh regularly argues that education is the key to helping to overcome religiosity. And we know that that's reflected in studies, that the more educated people are, the less religious they tend to be. That um, that education, the more you learn about the world, the less likely you are to be uh, to be like extremely religious. And that doesn't indicate that religion is is necessarily um like irrational in and of itself simply that broadening your perspective is more likely to moderate your religious beliefs uh yeah so let's continue necessarily ethical um, I really wish you would debate Vosh on this. I don't know if I, I, I mean, I'd be open to having a conversation with Vosh on this, but I don't really know. Like, I don't know. I would need to do a lot of research before that. I'm interested in, 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 in analyzing this more than debating it, but. Well, let's get through this and then we'll, we'll decide on that. I'd be open to having a conversation with Vosh about this, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how helpful I don't know how helpful this type of debate is. I think that the conversation around it is more helpful, believe it or not. Anyway, let's continue. It wouldn't yeah, matter. I how think smart that that's a are. that's this is a problem that uh, will show up where I'll agree with you with respect to criticism of religion in this regard, but I think that it's something that it shows up with respect to specific religions that have supremacy narratives. But it's fine that, even if they don't, it's still a problem. I I See, this is where I disagree, that if you have a religion that doesn't have a supremacy narrative, a lot of the things that you're talking about wind up going by the wayside. What like Bro! Things that just okay, this is one of the best, this is one of the best points that Ocean Keltoy makes throughout here, which is, um, which is that, that actually a lot of religions that don't have supremacy narratives, a lot of religions that are, um, that are like, like, for example, Buddhism, enormous swaths of Buddhism have no supremacy narrative and no, um, and no uh, 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 proselyt proselytization. So, um, so it, it's kind of, I, I feel like that's like a, I feel like this is a raw, like that, like the, anyway, what I'm trying to say is I think Ocean Keltoy brings up a great point here, which is that yes, it's true when you're arguing against Christianity or other like highly, highly evangel evangelizing um, positions, but it's really not true when you're talking about say, uh, you know, pantheism or Buddhism or, uh, you know, general spiritualism. There's so many, there are so many uh, different views that simply do not have supremacy narratives like that. And and also that that, that those, um, I mean, Taoism, certain aspects, certain forms of Taoism don't, but many, many forms of Taoism have no supremacy narrative like they're literally devoted to finding one way to heaven out of many that there's an, an acknowledgement of many paths to heaven but heaven meaning uh, meaning immortality not heaven in the christian sense Humphead Sassy says, it's always give and take. Buddhist nationalism, though seemingly paradoxical, is, is real movement. Of course, of course. That's why I'm saying I think that it's important to, but you can't, if you're going to make an, if you're going to make a, um, if you're going to make an anti-theist stance, you need to make your arguments against theism, not against a particular flavor of theism. Otherwise, you're not making an anti-theist argument. So this is one of the things that I encounter personally with a lot of anti-theist arguments is that they tend to argue specifically against Abrahamic faiths and not against the millions of other people uh, and other types of religion that exist in the world, many of which are totally different uh, from the, from, you know, Christianity or Islam or any of these other more uh, patriarchal, rigid uh, religions. Let's continue. Don't what show do they up. believe? I was, I'm a for my particular manifestation of religion, right? I this is not I don't engage in a supremacy narrative. You can be an atheist, that's fine. I can be heathen, that's fine. That's but what not do you necessarily believe an issue. that contradicts empirical reality? What additional uh, what 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 as far as like contradicting it? No. I'm I'm I think that empiricism is a useful tool for uh, engaging with reality, just like I think that there are other useful tools for engaging with reality. And what if we're looking at history, 
Like, for example, if you're looking at history, you're going to be engaging with history and different assumptions that aren't necessarily empirical in order to build a narrative with information. The difference it, is the difference is that those are analytical methods that are meant to provide right. us understanding of something empirical, whereas religion, superstition adds just like there's there's no there's it's not analysis to believe there are like spirits or fairies or whatever. That's just an extra right, I think thing that, that a person believes. And I'm against superstition, but I'm against superstition in a way that the Romans and Greeks have criticized it, not with respect to just say, labeling all religious beliefs as superstition. Well, then what do you believe that I would disagree with, assuming that I'm a fully, uh, uh, you know... Um, well, I mean, I believe the gods exist, atheist. so I mean, we probably disagree on that. Um, well, there we go. I'm well, holding that the gods said, exist. But you just said you were against the superstition. Is that not like a right, fairy? Right, and that's what I'm saying. Han Sabi says, imperialist Japanese empire was Shinto, Shinto Buddhist and repressed Christians. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and the Tibetan Buddhist caste operated a slave state where the, there are reactionary strains of Buddhists which even proselyte, proselytize militantly. I agree, but, but there are also enormous strains of Buddhism that do not follow that at all. And likewise, for many, many different ones. I would say Christianity doesn't really have that almost most strains of Christianity are some form of evangelical. It's pretty foundational to Christianity, but uh, there are so many religious beliefs in the world that do not include mat like proselytization as we understand it. Let let's 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 rewind here real quick. Gods said, exist, but you just said you were against the superstition. Um, well, there we go. I'm well, holding that the gods said, exist, but you just said you were against the superstition. Is that not like a right? And that's why I'm saying that I'm against the superstition with respect to how the Romans and the Greeks criticized it, not with respect to labeling all of religion as superstition. So when Plutarch, uh, there's there's Roman right, Roman and Greek writer Theophrastus and Plutarch. Theophrastus talk, uh, had a uh, text called Characters, where okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, everybody, I have to, I have to make fun of the chat here. I have to make fun of VGG chat. I have to do it. I'm sorry. Ocean Keltoy cites a writer that these people don't recognize and 900 people in VGG just put question marks and question mark emojis. Uh, I don't recognize that writer. What's this guy talking about? Duh. Like, like, how can you? Oh my fucking God. Come on, guys. Think. Be a little like, if you don't know something, look it up. Have a little bit of intellectual curiosity. Uh, a, a word I don't recommend? What? Uh, what an idiot. What a stupid idiot. Come on, guys. Come the Ah, come on. Fucking come on. Jesus. Where he goes through a series of basically morally yeah, think, um, bad people uh, and just describes like these negative characteristics. And one of them was the superstitious man. And the superstitious man describes somebody who is absolutely debilitated by trying to uh, adhere to every single religious custom that is part of his society. By the way, I'm just going to say this outright. If you hear a word that you don't know and you go to look it up to learn more about it, you are doing a good thing. That is a great thing to do. It is, if you don't know a word, you don't have to be embarrassed by that. You don't have to be embarrassed by not knowing a definition. I mean, unless you've like really overplayed your hand and you're like, you know, I don't know, you're like pretending to be a doctor and then somebody says, you know, there's a, there's like a severe injury in this patient's like aorta and you're like, what's an aorta? And they're like, you're a doctor. You're supposed to be doing a surgery. And you're like, actually, I was just pretending. Other than that, please look it up, please. It's, it's helpful. Let's continue. Such that it, it uh, negatively impacted his life to the extent that he wasn't able to live and uh, describes this as like a moral flaw, basically. So when you have somebody that is believing in religion in such a way that they're taking it to this sort of like okay, extremity gosh. and uh, impacting their own life in a negative way like that, that's where... Um, Obviously, you can criticize my threshold is, is well beyond that point. Sure. I mean, I don't and even so, like horoscopes. I mean, I consider people who right. believe in horoscopes to fit in And this horoscopes can, in, can manifest in that way where you have somebody who is because... Wait, but, but like horoscopes are... Horoscopes are like... Horoscopes are, are like... I, I feel like a lot of times horoscopes are brought up as a bad faith example. 
horoscopes are the most fraudulent form of pop spirit of like pop mysticism they are so fraudulent they're so fraudulent that there's literally like guys like fucking f fucking fucking fortune cookie companies hire people to to come up with fortunes to put in their fortune cookies it's the most fraudulent form of like mysticism you can imagine it's kind of a, a, like an it's like i don't know it's kind of a straw man like yes i will agree that like uh, a lot of people who like really really buy into horoscopes are being fucking stupid um and also that it like encourages people to be really dumb about shit but but that's because it's like the most basic it's like designed to prey off of like uh, i don't know it's like lottery tickets right Wendell B says, fraudulent or not, you have to buy into some weird shit to believe the most basic form of astrology. Okay, okay. Hold on a second, though. I want to I wanna talk about one thing. Because I do agree that horoscopes are, like, really toxic and shit like that in a lot of ways. But keep in mind that, like, the vast majority of people don't really believe in horoscopes. Okay? Let me give you an example. When I was an extreme Christian, I used to keep my fortune cookies i would whenever i got a fortune cookie uh thing i would keep it because i don't know it just made me feel good every time i opened a fortune cookie i would keep the little thing inside and i would see i don't know it made me feel like i don't know what if god decides to speak to me through this funny fortune cookie but if anybody ever pressed me and was like do you really believe in the fortune cookies i would of course be like no of course not I don't really think that. It was just, it's more of like a frivolity. It's more of just like a fun frivolity. I think most people, um, I think most people when pushed on horoscopes don't really believe in them that much. It's more of just like a fun thing. I, I do think there are some people, obviously there are giant grifters who take this shit really seriously. I mean, fuck, there's a video I want to show you guys later that's just some woo ass bullshit. But, you know. Yeah, it's it's more it's like opening it's like opening a fucking blind box, you know? It's not really uh I don't think people are I, I think most people don't really take it all that seriously. Um though I will agree that like some people are really stupid about it. Like they're like the, it'll it'll affect their dating preferences and stuff. But yeah. Anyway, let's continue. I'm spinning off on a little thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. of their horoscopes afraid to Okay, that's true, Windleby. But again, how deep does that belief go? I mean, I think a lot of people... Wait, wait, wait. But Windleby, I know in my community... Okay, I agree with you in that it should be analyzed, but I know in my community there are a ton of people who are determinists. There are a ton of people who, who, who are determinists in this community because we've had arguments about determinism on the call-in streams and people got really up in arms about it. And determinism is literally people and their interactions are determined by some inquantifiable force. That's literally, and I know this audience is full of determinists. So is there really that much of a difference between an astrologer and a, uh, an astrology believer and, uh, and a, determin a, a determinism believer? Uh. It is star racism though. Yes, it is. Yes, I do think the essentialism that often comes with horoscopes is incredibly stupid. But I also, to be fair, I really don't think that most people take the astrology all that seriously. Um, I, have a, I have a big problem with that essentialism. But, uh, yeah, I, I think the biggest problem is that it, like... I don't know. It normalizes, it normalizes a type of, like, frivolous essentialism. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Thank you, Silent. Let's continue. Live, no, right? Any like that, we see steps. that manifestation. Like any at all, like any belief in it whatsoever. I, I've got a, not the best opinion on horoscopes generally, if you want my like absolute honest opinion. They predict but at the same time, if, you're, if somebody, yeah, you're talking about the essentialism thing. I yeah. think I addressed that in my video to you. A, what is it, a year ago or some shit um but like and i think that there is like an essentialism problem that shows up with horoscopes true i think that 
uh, if you get into some forms of uh, astrology, I see. Yeah, this is one of those things. This is a practice I'm not super familiar with, so it's not something that I would stake my arguments on. Um, so, oh. yeah, here's another example: people bringing up tarot cards, guys. Tarot people fucking love tarot cards. Do you know how many tarot card enthusiasts I, I I've known? They don't believe that the tarot cards actually do anything. It's for fun and aesthetic and giving spice to life. There are people who do believe in tarot readings, but there are a lot of people who collect, make, and are enthusiastic about tarot cards, even though, even though if you're a true believer in tarot cards, you're, you're, a, you're, you're buying into some serious bullshit. Also, again, th this whole thing is like, can can tarot cards and astrology encourage essentialist beliefs? Yes, it can. But our society already has like a significant amount of essentialist beliefs that are way, way, way more seriously taken than astrology. I think astrology and stuff like that is way more likely to plug into those already existent beliefs than to be the cause of it if that makes any sense. But of course, I strongly believe in introspection and uh, in a deeply analyzing why you believe the things that you believe. Well, he brought up essentialism, but but yeah, let's continue. We're, we but gotta make you it can this. have like uh, fascistic expressions of it, definitely. Like that's, and I think that that's true of heathenry, my religion as well. You, there's definitely fascistic representations of heathenry where you get into heathens that engage oh, in a supremacy yeah. narrative. A exact. Oh, perfect example, Hercules. Hercules says the gender binary as an essential belief. Don't need to be religious to hold that belief. That's true. There are tons of of irreligious people who also buy into the essentialized belief of the gender binary. They believe it as scientific fact. And can you, and, and it doesn't seem like modern science is convincing them otherwise. And that supremacy narrative winds up being a racist one. But I don't want and, any of it. I don't, right. I, even for so you're the not, non. I'm against the supremacy narratives. Yeah, I don't, they don't want have any to be of against them. the religion in order to be against the supremacy narrative. But the religion's still a problem because it adds non empirical factors into what would otherwise potentially be an empirical ethical analysis. I mean, and so do if, a lot of like, if you're engaging in mathematics, if you're engaging in logic, you're going to have to start engaging in some non silence says tarot's tarot is cool because instead of just a general statement that you try to think about how it would apply to you, you get in a tactile sense, but with more things to literally draw from the individual card art, the emerging narrative that a reading can provide both in card descriptions and in the art on the cards. Yes. I think for a lot of people, even even spiritual tarot believers, it's more about like a meditative practice where the cards act as sort of a a a a ritual by which you have a guided path of thinking about things. Anyway. Empirical stuff. Empiricism is not an end all be all when it comes to finding truth. Well, when it and comes to. There's several studies across philosophy. Nuts, nuts, you're such a dick. I feel like chat's being really open tonight about all the dumb shit they waste their time and money on. I love it. Wasting your money on dumb shit that does nothing to benefit your life. It's a spice of life. That's fucking everything, you dumb asshole. Everything in life is stupid and wasteful, and it's just a way to fill up the spice in your life. Are you fucking kidding me? Do you really think that the sodies you drink and the fucking video games you play are that important? No, they're fucking frivolities that you do to keep yourself busy on the inevitable crawl towards the grave. That wasn't nice! Nuts, that wasn't nice at all! Oh my god. Holy shit.
I, I am, I'm always, listen, look, no matter what, no matter how much I call you out, I'm always thankful for Nuts' presence, okay? Nuts is one of my favorite chatters, okay? It's never, it's never a boring night with Nuts. That do not in deal with empiricism, and I would, like, among them would be, a, a history but, deals with empiricism on some level, but you still have to uh, make a certain amount of assumptions, such as the documents that you're reading are somewhat I'm, reliable I'm as accounts anti, and that kind of shit. I'm not anti-philosophy, and I'm certainly not anti-analysis. I know that there are things that we do to obtain knowledge that go outside the bound of pure empirical measurement. The problem right. One is One of those that things is theology. Religious people make empirical arguments or believe empirically in things that aren't empirical. So, Not all religious people. I hate to pull that, but not all religious people. Uh, I, I don't, I, I, there are, I mean, I would say that a lot of religious people make some empirical claims, but it, that is a Christian thing. It's Christians who believe in spiritual warfare. It's Christians who, who believe that there are literally angels and demons pulling the levers of the world that are influencing the world. Lots of people see spiritual beliefs as essentially uh, only like, as, as, it, like indirectly active or, or indirectly active parts of the world. Deists, for example, are a great example of that. Hey, thank you very much, Zoe Vex. Uh, deeply, deeply appreciate that. Thank you so much. It's great to see you again as well. This is a, you've come in in a very complicated conversation, but thank you so, so much for the support. Deeply appreciate that. True, true, true. Ocean Keltoy brings up a good point here, saying not all seems to be a reasonable objection because anti-theism and saying these problems are inherent to theism. Yeah, that's that's what that's what, I have to remember. That's kind of where we started with this: is whether the anti-theist part is the part that, like, the anti part is the part that's questionable. Yes, yes. Not all angels um, believe in angels and demons. Yeah, that's true. But I will say that a lot of Christians, a, a lot of Christian faiths, believe in a very. Um, like in, in that there's a lot of engagement between the spiritual and the material whereas many spiritual beliefs um the the engagement between the material and the spiritual is very abstract or uh metaphorical as opposed to literal The belief in the existence of a god isn't a philosophical framework it's not an analytical narrative You're saying they believe it empirically if, if a person believes that something is capable of affecting the real world, analysis isn't. Analysis can't change the interaction of photons and molecules or whatever. Uh, philosophy can't. It informs the way we make empirical decisions. But if you believe there's a deity that can influence the physical world, you're making an empirical claim, not supported empirically. If the god is just this, like, abstract philosophical concept like a sort of mm -hmm. ana like like an analytical no like a like a alliterative way of describing a, a process you know i would still take issue with it um because this often takes the form of like the personification of natural phenomena which impedes our understanding of it in a genuine empirical sense and my just, perspective on polytheism would be like uh definitely into the realm of what you would be against then because i'm holding as the gods as external agents minds i've we might talk about imminent polytheism or something like that and get into the kind of the, the various then you, forms then of Then you it, think they're empirical. Again, You're making an empirical claim there. Because if they affect as, the no, real world, no, they have not, to be as, empirical. I feel that the mind is non-physical. So, and I'm, I might be, uh, I've been leaning towards like ideal. I'm actually unfamiliar with the term imminent polytheism. I would have to, uh, I would have to learn more about that. I don't, I'm not familiar with that term. Realism lately is with respect to like my philosophy of what the external world is, so. But can um, they, but like these gods, I mean, if they can direct the winds or control energy or matter or anything mm -hmm. like that, they must necessarily be empirical phenomena. They're in the realm yeah, of empirics. Yeah, you could probably say some empirical things about the areas that they manifest. Like you could probably predict where the rain is going and say that that's Freyr or something like that. But I don't think that um, that, that gives you necessarily access to Freyr's mind or anything. Just as knowing the parts of the brain doesn't necessarily give the ability to read a mind. Yeah, and, but if you know, you... maybe we'll develop that technology at some point, and it'd be interesting to see how that affects God belief, or how we can interact with, like, if you have the ability, some sort. Infernatrix Sophia says this is a bad argument on Bosch's part because they can have an empirical material effect even without being materially real through the process of hyperstition or merely just emulation of the concepts they embody. Yes, that is that is true. Uh, the 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 hyperstition or emulation 
is actually very much, that is actually an empirical material effect. Like you could talk about, for example, the belief in Q, right? Uh, somebody brought that up in chat that like, um, that like Q is a uh, uh, belief in like the Q narrative, the QAnon narrative is a non, is a not explicitly religious belief that is, of course, comes hand in hand with a lot of other religiosity, but it's a belief that has had a severe, uh, like Q, whether an, a single Q actually exists, the idea of Q has had an unbelievable, empirically verifiable effect on the world because of the actions of its believers, which you could argue is is probably true about most religions, right? So like, yeah. Oh, there you go. Discord and Vol was the one who brought it up. QAnon is the natural conclusion of the flat earth conspiracy. Yeah, kind of true. Sort of apparatus that is able to read a mind and utilize that in order <laughs> to have some sort of communication Derek, with the gods and that starts getting revealed. Then you start having empirical conversations about minds and gods and all of that kind of shit. And you wind up ha answering a few questions with respect to uh, mind body problem and all this other philosophical crap that we've been hitting our heads this with for millennia, but that's not where we're at right now. This is what you know led what I mean? to people doing rain dances. I mean, it's, it's a. It's a, it's a non. I have no problem with rain dances. Well, I, I know, but I do because they cause people to starve because they thought they could. Could solve their famines by dancing instead of other approaches towards. Okay. Uh, all right. I got. I gotta go. Kind of. You gotta go. Kind of hard here. Uh, Vosh. I. I. Okay. That is not what rain dances are. It is. Literally, it is, yes, it is a completely upside down understanding of rain dances. Rain dances are, as far as I, and I keep in mind, this is my white ass understanding. As an outsider, I am not Native American. Um, but as I understand it, rain dances were understood as essentially a ritual that would, uh, that people would partake in uh, to celebrate, like, to, to, to celebrate and to hope for rain. There was, as as I understand it, nobody like did rain dances instead of farming or instead of of you know traveling to a different location to find food ever. Rain dances were done as an acknowledgement of the hardship of dry times. They were a way to find joy and 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 hope and instill you know a sense of we are going to make it through the rain will come and we will dance to show that the rains will eventually come not not they are not they were not rain dances did not lead to famines uh to my knowledge no no tribe that performed rain dances uh did so with the belief that the rain dance is the thing that brings the rain instead it was a a spiritual nod to the forces that bring rain and and was done as a way of you know building uh hope and togetherness yeah um i just i feel like this is a very it's unfortunate but in this particular moment, Vosh kind of reminds me, nah, nah, it's not fair. I just think that's, I think that was a little bit, I, I think that was insensitive and uninformed. I, I really do think that that's, that's insensitive and uninformed. And I also think that it's a slip up on his part, because I think he could make a better argument here without leaning into racism and without, uh, without, and I do think it's discriminatory to like, act like Native Americans were all starving because they were doing rain dances when that's just not true. You know? I was, I, I remember hearing this at the initial and I, and I found that this was a, and I found this was a, a bad, a, a pretty bad argument to make. No, don't you do that. Why do you guys got to be so weird about that shit? Stop it. Let's go. Um, towards agricultural management. It doesn't do anything. Right. Uh, I don't think that it matters necessarily 
like as far as this conversation goes, what as, as far as the arguments whether or not God exists, I think that where I can hang my hat on and where you can hang your hat on is uh, that when you get into the upper echelons of the philosophical conversation, this isn't a settled matter. And I think that I've even heard you say that we should be withholding judgment at the end of the day, right? I'll withhold judgment when talking to people, but if I'm talking about why I reject these ideas, I mean, I have to be forthcoming about it. I, I think it brings ruin. Um, and it's an unreliable way of assessing. Boots Monkey from YouTube chat says, perhaps a small one, but I think his point is that resources could certainly be used better if rain dances weren't engaged in at all. But that's, that's fucking, okay, but that's such a silly, that's such a silly thing. You could say that about anything. Um, anything, resources can always be used better. Like, you guys are sitting here watching my stream. You don't think that there's probably a better use of resources than you all sitting and watching my stream? There isn't, because my stream is the best thing ever and you should definitely contribute and absolutely keep watching. Do not stop watching. All I'm saying is, you know, I'm just saying that you can always make the argument that things could be used better, but it's not, like, who the fuck are you to decide that? If people, if you, okay, if you had to live through like a long dry season every single year uh, and there was no, there was like low food and you might, you know, I think it's perfectly rational that a rain dance could be a, uh, could be a enjoyable social experience that helps you process the pain of living through a dry, a, a dry season. Yeah, no, I understand that. How is it that you have a fan on, but we can't hear it? Excellent audio management. No, no, uh, uh, almost good one. Oh, Ocean Keltoy. Um, I would be open to that. Um, I would be open to that, but uh, but I don't know if I'll have the energy to do it today. I'm certainly open to a, a conversation in the future. Um, I've just, I, I've already been going pretty long for today's stream. So I might want to push that to another day. No, no offense. Yeah. Because uh, I, I, I am definitely interested in having a conversation with you. I feel like we'd ha we could have like an amazing one. What Landon Turner from YouTube chat says, well, what if a rain dance prevents a tribe from getting up and moving when that would be better than staying in a desolate area? Did that happen? Does that happen? And if it did... Well, there's all kinds of things. People do that now. People, how many Americans stay in their house uh, because, because they are not convinced that a wildfire is gonna come through their area and they just stay there because they're like, nah, I'm fine. Because they're like too busy listening to Fox News. Like that's hardly, you can hardly pin that on the rain dance and to pin it on the rain dance just seems frankly a little racist. Also, rain dances took like fucking. How long do you think a rain dance is? A rain dance is like a like a like a like an hour long ritual or something. Come on, come on. Think a person's ethics, you know. No matter how you came to believe in what you believe in, the gods or whatever, you got that from somewhere. And mm -hmm. if you got that from somewhere, that means there's a source from which you can derive non-empirical beliefs oh uh, and all it would right. take uh, is a mean, wait, somebody in the discord one of my mods in the discord please uh manually verify ocean keltoy sorry about that we've had some issues with the verification process somebody manually verify uh ocean keltoy please thank you alora thank you believe that source of information for you to potentially believe in the valid instead of call pansabi instead of calling it racist you could just say it's uninformed because i doubt vosh is intentionally trying to discriminate i agree for the record, I do not think Vosh is a racist. I do think the remark was a little insensitive. What I was saying was, I was saying some of the arguments in chat were a little racist, okay? There we go, there we go. I don't think Vosh is a racist. I, I, never mind. I feel like I don't have to say that, but all right. I'll say it just to be clear. Like the nature, like human sacrifice. You know, people did that yeah. for their polytheistic deities. And how could I morally mm -hmm. argue you out of that? If you genuinely believe that a famine could be settled with a human sacrifice, if that's an empirical belief that you hold, ethically, you're in the right. The problem is that your, your predicating beliefs are incorrect. The existence of that God. 
lot of Americans every single day believe that famine will be solved by capitalism, that it'll be solved by continued economic growth, and there is just as much rationality behind that as there is behind believing that a a dance will solve a a made up imaginary dance will potent if for a made up religion would solve your famine. There's all kinds of beliefs that can lead people to coming to the wrong conclusions. This is not an argument. This is not an argument uh, in in favor of an anti theist position. This is just an argument that there are some beliefs that are like less effective than others. Uh, 85D2D Derek says, Rain Dance was a bad example, but people get the point he was trying to make, right? Yes. I think he was trying to make an argument against, like, thought, basically, like, thoughts and prayers, which is a real thing. That, like, sometimes, instead of becoming involved, a lot of people will basically just, like, give their thoughts and prayers. But again, atheists do that, too, just so you know. As we know, the atheist, the internet atheists were wrong about the idea that being an atheist intrinsically makes you more likely to engage with the world. Fucking atheists do thoughts, prayers, and positivity all the time. How many fucking atheists are dyed in the wool capitalists? Like, tons. Like, like fucking tons. But yeah, let's continue. The value of the human sacrifice, but I could never argue you out of that. So arguments against human sacrifice show up with Plutarch. Uh, and I think that, again, we can talk about pluralism with respect to human sacrifice. Harmful practices are going to be the kind of thing which, as a pluralist, you're going to be objecting to. Why? Pluralism, I think, is going to be a better us. strategy here. But if the gods What's will up? reward us with bounty and food... If we perform a human I'd sacrifice. argue even then you it's if even if you try to argue that kind of thing I don't think that you could demonstrate that first off and second I don't think that uh, even if it's true it's something that is worth engaging in because of the harmful practice nature well, of it we're not basing our beliefs on whether we can demonstrate it that's silence says Richard Dawkins thinks that eugenics could work to make a human super race being an atheist is no protection against brain worms yeah see that's part of the problem that I have which is that there's such a prevalence of irrational and ridiculous and horrible beliefs among atheists as well that I can't really, I don't really feel like religion is the operating factor here. Richard Dawkins is kind of a moron, yes. Go back real quick. Demonstrate that first off. And second, I don't think that uh, even if it's true, it's something that is worth engaging in because of the harmful practice nature well, of it. We're not basing our beliefs on whether we can demonstrate it. That's the whole point. You don't either. Right. That's so my if game. you're going to say that it's a good practice to do, you need to be able to demonstrate on some level that it's a good practice to do. And that's not, uh, if you're going to, you especially okay with respect with to dances. harming somebody. So what? You said you're okay with rain dances. Yeah. There's not a harmful element to that. Well, there's a very beneficial element to potentially ending a drought or a famine, right? I mean, if they believe right. that. Like if somebody is, I'd say that if you're, uh, you know, if somebody is engaging in rain dances and or prayers for rain or something like that, that's not necessarily a problem because it's not a harmful practice. Right, but the when you're talking about human sacrifice, all of a sudden you're dealing with harmful practices, if, right? If people believe enough in the idea that showing glory to a deity will bring good, to mm -hmm. do a rain dance human sacrifices aren't that far off you take and a and if people believe that enough gumption will help you uh become an you know that enough gumption will let you be a successful entrepreneur they will waste their entire lives cor climbing the corporate ladder that's not religious is it or is that also religious I i'm gonna keep going back to this because this is all over the place in America and isn't religion. Like, like there are people who believe, there are a lot of Americans who believe that if everybody would just go to work and do their goddamn job, the whole world would be solved of all of its problems because capitalism is the best world that's ever existed. It is a religion, it's called a civil religion. True, but we haven't moved to that yet. If we want to really talk about anti-theism, if you really want to be against irrational belief, you're going to have to take on the, you're going to have to take on the belief in the state. You're going to have to take on the belief in governance and society.
but we're not going to talk about that tonight. Or maybe we will, but not right now. Let's continue. Object to that to the same way we object to political beliefs that have the same kind of consequences. But genocide group X, therefore, and that'll be better for our society. But I don't have to you know argue what I mean? against like a religion. I can do empirics in there. Well, you're going to be arguing against something that can't be demonstrated until you know what I mean. Like this. No, but if that's the point. Religious people don't wait to see if it's demonstrated. Christians. Pray. Neither do the political narratives. The, yeah, but if you, you have the political narrative, that Christians that is like, hey, let's do genocide X, then. You're not going to have people that are going to go, oh, well, can you demonstrate that first or whatever the fuck? Like, that's, we've, we've seen that a couple of times in history, right? Well, for, Where, wait, first of all, most genocides have been committed by religious people. So we're kind of shaking, like, we're arguing on shaky ground, like, from the get go there. And second, of, like, right, well, overwhelmingly mass throughout murders history. Of, but, uh, okay, but uh, that's, that's, that's such a cheap shot argument. Most everything in the world was done by religious people. Most people throughout history have been religious. Like, claiming that, like, most genocides were done by religious people is not... Ah, it's not a fair argument. Come on. Come on. Gosh. Come on. Oh. Hey, what? For religious purposes? Yes! Wait, what do you mean for an easy read? Hold on a second. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you going to argue that most genocides in all of history were done for explicitly religious purposes? Hold on. I'm 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 misunderstanding here, okay? Because I would argue that you do not have the sub, uh, you do not have the data to make that argument. Reason being, there are s p fucking crazy political reasons for the purposes of, uh for the purposes of genocide. Okay, okay, good. Okay. Okay, I'm I must be mis Okay, I'm sorry. I must be misinterpreting. I would say that uh, I think this is a sloppy argument. I just think this is a sloppy argument. That's the takeaway, okay? That's the takeaway. That I think this is a sloppy argument because most people throughout history have been religious. Many people have done many things for religious reasons or at least informed by their religious beliefs. And yes, that includes genocide. But as we know, there is an ongoing genocide in China right now that is being perpetuated by a atheistic state. So populations. I'm not arguing. I'm, okay. Oh yeah, that uh, striped kidder literally just said that, yes people are always rational i'm only saying that adding the religiosity as an, ad an additional extra layer of like mm -hmm. immutable political like invulnerability when it comes to argumentation if a group of people like a community or a culture or whatever believe there are gods in the sky that do reward them uh with rain or with food or with bounty when they show those gods glory the step up to human sacrifice is a totally rational one this is why I hate that, like, Westerners arrogantly look down on human sacrifice in, like, Aztec culture or whatever. Like, that's so much more barbaric than the fucking Crusades, which had, like, 5,000, 10,000, 500,000 times. I'm not going to be defending the Crusades either. Crusades are obviously no, a harmful I, I, practice and anti-pluralist, right? So, like, well, and, wait, I mean, I, as a pagan, I'm not going to have a good... What is this argument? I, I don't know. I feel like Vosh was trying to be sarcastic there, but I just don't feel like it landed. Like, first of all, the idea that people, like, the idea that it's a short jump from believing that there are, like, things like prayer that you can do to human sacrifice, I don't think that's substantiable. Uh, I, and also, I, I just don't believe it because there's tons of people who believe in prayer and very few people who believe in human sacrifice. There are tons of people who don't believe in prayer but who believe in human sacrifice in the form of the economy that basically, you know, essential workers are a worthy sacrifice in order to keep the economy going. There's like, like literally that's the current position of the White House. Also, uh, And yes, also this is a this is a bit of a um this is a bit of a silly I don't know. I think not not silly. I would say this is an underbaked analysis of the Crusades. I don't want to get in deeply on the Crusades, but the Crusades were 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 heavily influenced. Obviously, they were hugely religious projects, but they were also deeply political. 
uh, a lot of the reasons for the Crusades was literally to make money for the dying coffers of various kings. Uh, they were they were enormous. You know, they were sold via religion. They were sold via a narrative of religion, um, and religious figures participated. But they they were also hugely political. Yeah, they're deeply political. I mean, there was a reason why. Uh, part of the main thing of being a crusader was that you got to fucking keep loot that you could you could take spoils those spoils were designed to enrich the emptied coffers of europe europe had been infighting for so long that they had all wasted all of their resources and there was widespread poverty there was widespread lack of resources even among the nobles so there was a there was a economic a massive economic incentive to to make the creates happen Lamau Pansabi. Let's go. Position on, on the Crusades. I think that even Christianity in general, you might be able to make some pluralist arguments against. However, uh, because I think that with Christianity, we find a... Uh, is there a way to depoliticize religion? No. Everything is political. Everything that you do, every part of your life is political. Proclivity towards authoritarianism. And that proclivity towards authoritarianism is what lends to shit where you get into the justification of harmful practices, regardless of the effect. Well, because not, now you have a supremacy narrative. Now you have authoritarianism. But I'm not saying that you would be pro-crusades. I'm only arguing that from the perspective of the Aztecs, the idea of human sacrifice was an empirically justifiable one. They already believed that showing glory to the gods. From the, pos from the position of Joe Biden human sacrifice in the name of the economy, the desperate need to keep the American economy afloat means that it's okay to sacrifice a bunch of, uh, a bunch of essential workers. This is, this is, tons of societies have these harmful beliefs that aren't strictly religious. To bring them bounty. So a human empirical, sacrifice- was, Wait, what do you think empirical is? Is that a bad, am I, am I, am I missing something here? Or am I missing something in this argument? Because they- th But the economy is material? So- so is fear? So is fear. Doing human sacrifices has a material effect beyond that of the gods. It's not about, like, like, you don't think that a hu- that human sacrifices of your- of the people that you enslave and conquer, if you do human sacrifices, uh, bloody, terrifying human sacrifices of the people that you conquer. You don't think there's a material effect, a, a intentional material effect of that? Is fear material? It has material consequences. Well, no, fear is both material and has material consequences. Fear is, is, is an emotion that is carried by our, by our, um, our, fear is something, it's, 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 it's caused by hormones, yes. So it is both, fear is both material and fear has material consequences. I, I just, I don't, I don't find this, I don't find this, how does this, how does this piece fit into the anti-theism thing? Thought the God. Again, my, my recurring point throughout this debate is focusing on how does this build a case for anti-theism? I hope people understand what I'm talking about here. Uh, I'm trying to talk, I'm trying to, to, to address this as an argument about anti-theism and whether or not that, like, whether or not this supports the thesis of the anti-theism thesis. Let's continue. It's were an empirical force in the world. If you presuppose that, that the gods exist empirically as in they can Wait, affect what? the world. What like, is empirical? Sorry, maybe material. Maybe I'm misusing the word. Like a material. Okay. They believe the gods are a material force in the world. And I if don't you think presuppose that, they thought that, that, I don't, as, as polytheists, we generally hold that the um, non physicalness is an aspect I'm of pretty sure the, as part of the. The, the Aztecs but, did believe that the, the gods. The Aztecs were could, not physicalists. And the, regardless, well, please, as, please, as far please, as like please, the please, Aztecs please. being. The we can take it to another. Let's move from the Aztecs to uh, no, the history but I haven't of finished the Hold on, yet. one second. Wait, one I, second. but you can't one second me. I, I have to one second I you. Give, you can still talk about human sacrifice. I just want to move it to a religion I'm more familiar with. Uh, we can talk about the history of my own religion, which has human sacrifice in it, and we can discuss it from there. It's just I want to move it out of like uh, out of out of that conversation into one that I have a little bit more familiarity with, but still has the same problem, so that we can discuss it substantively. Okay. 
All right, go ahead. So heathens in the past did human sacrifices to Odin. Yes, yes, we agree on that. So Silent. go ahead and make Thank your you. point. Okay. If they believe that the gods are a material force in the world, which they did, even if they didn't believe the gods would show up and fuck them physically, but they did believe that. I know I, I, it was Odin and Thor. They fucked you had some humorous beliefs with history, yeah. They've got uh, Snorri talking about how Freyr is part of the royal family of Sweden yeah, they or whatever. literally thought, yeah, yeah like, in the uh, world. It's a Christian's record, but, you know, anyway, uh, whatever. Go ahead. They thought, even, even if they were just metaphysical forces, Thor being lightning would mean that he could affect the world materially. And if you believe mm -hmm. those things, if that's a material belief that you hold, un unerringly, you know, um, people would be executed for, like, for heresy. I mean, you know, you have to believe this to varying extents. It is not irrational. It is purely logical to then go, yeah, human sacrifices to honor the gods are a good thing. That's a, that's a correct argument if you presuppose the existence of those gods. And that's what makes the religious you angle... You can really have dangerous. the... If you presuppose the existence of the gods and you believe that's what the gods want, there's a couple of things going on here. Like I said, I'll go back to it. Joe Biden believes because of his presuppositions about the importance of the American economy, that it is a worthy sacrifice for hundreds of thousands of essential workers and old people to die, so long as the American economy doesn't go under. Distance of the gods, and you can even hold the human sacrifice as effective or whatever, not my position, but let's, like, let's talk about it. You can still at that point hold a pluralist position and say, regardless of whatever effect human sacrifice has, regardless of it, you, it's still not a preferable position to, or preferable practice to have because the of the gods. harm associated with it. Doesn't matter. It, it absolutely if the gods are asking matters. you to do things that are unethical, then fuck that shit. The, for, the, right? Like that's and that's easy enough to convince somebody to do. If the gods are asking you to harm people, this is a oh, I think right here is a section where I think Vosh is a little bit stuck in Christian, like in debating against Christianity because polytheists. I, I, to my knowledge, the vast majority of like polytheists don't believe in like the ethical supremacy of any one god over the others. I'm sure there's probably some types of polytheism where there's like a god that wins out over the others. But like throughout most of history, the the believers in polytheism, people would gravitate towards different gods for different reasons. And there are like there are tons of gods that people don't listen to. Like I mean. Like, for example, like, I mean, how, like, like Hades is an example of a god that was seen both as like a, a representative of the forces of death, but also was seen as someone who often needed to be defied. Yeah, uh, Infernatrix Sophia says a lot of gods in heathenry and Hellenism are largely regarded even by their worshippers as being massive fucking dicks. Gayfesh says, so many anti-theists are like, you should believe in evangelical Christianity. You should believe in evangelical Christianity, which you shouldn't believe in. Yeah, it's a little bit getting stuck. St. Helen says, Julian Hellenism and Neoplatonism viewed the gods as morally perfect. Yeah, I imagine there's certain people that, I mean, there's certain factions that believe as like in, in morally infallible gods, but that's hard. I don't think you can generalize that. That's, that's like a Christian thing. The like, the all ethics, uh, you know, uh, come forth from God is a Christian thing. Killjoy says, I feel like I'm also guilty of this when I make anti-religious arguments. Well, I think a lot of people are. I think I've done that in the past, which is part of the reason why I have, uh, I have moved away from generally anti-theist arguments as time has gone on, despite my absolute my absolute disdain for most of Christianity, for the vast majority of Christianity, I still move away. I've still moved away from anti-theism because I just don't find the arguments of anti-theism particularly uh, compelling or 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 thorough enough. Yeah, people that are your friends, there's no reason to actually listen to but that. But they shit. thought the gods would raise their villages. They, the, the Norse, the, 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 the pagans didn't believe that the gods were um, necessarily the arbiters of morality, but they did believe they'd be punished for not showing due deference to the gods. Um, so if it's like, if you can do a human sacrifice okay, to keep so your this village gets into from being a, raised. This gets into a, a misunderstanding of history with respect to pagan belief, where 
uh, it's like, well, they worship the gods because they were afraid of them on some level. This is not what we see bearing out in history when we read these people actually discussing their own religions. Um, what? Usually what's going on is that we see people that are uh, giving and sacrifice and engaging in a system of reciprocity gifts for a gift that the, the gods give gifts and they give gifts in return. It's not like, Oh, well we didn't sacrifice to the gods. Therefore we're going to be experiencing this, experiencing a tsunami tomorrow or some shit or that uh, human sacrifices were not participated in or whatever. Like this is getting into like they, highly superstitious beliefs, they which we thought. have records of people in history bitching about and saying, this is a terrible practice stop fucking doing it because they of the consequences of it. There would be consequences for not venerating the gods and benefits to venerating the gods. That's pretty common across like and all And the consequence to human sacrifice is dead humans. Dead humans so, happen all the time. This is a sloppy argument. Vosh has invented a hypothetical per believer in the past that has no specificity. There's a, a hypothetical like Viking in the past with no specific beliefs except that they believe in human sacrifice. I just think this is sloppy. Like, I just, it's, he's not making like an offensive belief. I just think it's a sloppy argument. I don't know what, I don't know what's being said here. Are, were there, were there Norse people who literally believed that the gods would fuck you up if they didn't, if you didn't do certain things? Yeah, there's tons of people who believe that now. I just don't get it. I don't, I don't, I don't know what, what, I just feel like, like making an assertion, like they believed this when you're talking about a hypothetical Viking that you just invented for the purpose of this conversation is just, I just think it's, I just think it's slop, personally. You, you lose humans sending them out on hunting expeditions, but you execute one for the sake of keeping the god from raising your village or ending a drought. That's an ethical, like, argument that lands in your favor. Ethically, it, like, if you send a group of people out in a hunting party or a raiding party, we're talking about Vikings here, after all, you're far more right. likely to get more death for less gain than maintaining a studious... Well, and but that's the thing. Like, Killjoy, 40k, I feel like... He, okay, so here's where I want to be constructive. Uh, Killjoy says he's arguing against a bunch of beliefs that weren't necessarily held simultaneously. That's true. Why not just uh, argue against the belief in the abstract? Like, I think that he could have approached this by saying, okay, so how do you deal with things like uh, human sacrifice? And then I imagine that Ocean Keltoy probably would have some things to say about that, but that's not the way that this has progressed. Instead, there's like layers of hypothetical, and I just don't know that it's, I don't know. AT5 D2D Derek says all of Vosh's arguments are sloppy, but we love him anyway. I disagree. I think some of Vosh's arguments are spot on. I think Vosh is really good at a lot of debates. Uh, I just, I don't know if this one's his, uh, I don't know if this one's his strength. Reverent relationship with your deities. So human sacrifice is a logical thing to do. Under but we those see also in history that if the gods do not receive sacrifice, that the substantive damages that happen is not necessarily that, that kind of severe. If they People have about... been Christian for a long time, and especially now, right? Like if you're gonna, if we're gonna be talking about religiosity now with the arguments that we have access to and not just what people think are possible religions that exist. You know what I mean? Because I think that what you're talking about is like, well, if we have a possibility of this religion in which we can possibly come to that conclusion, all that kind of stuff, this is where we get into the religion analogy or the uh, politics analogy really quickly, that you can have people that are organized by... Rosie Rosie says he has admitted that he hates arguing religion. Well... Okay. I hate arguing about abortion because I think it's an absolutely annoying fucking topic. I hate, ar there's a lot of things I hate arguing about, but I don't know. I feel like if you're going to take the anti-theist position, then, you know, you gotta, you gotta just, you gotta just buckle up and get your arguments down. Lots of things that I hate arguing about, but yeah. Uh, atheistically, fascistically. And the problem there is going to be the authoritarianism. The problem with what you're talking about is the authoritarian aspect, not necessarily no, just it's, mere no, God it's belief the at that point. Process. It's the belief in anything spiritual that does this. It's not the authoritarian aspect. There's, if you believe... If this, is, this is a big claim saying that it is, it is not authoritarianism that leads people to this, but the belief in anything spiritual then how do you explain, like, how do you explain it deeply spiritual people who are committed 
uh, committedly anti-hierarchical, which is a lot of people, as it turns out, a lot of religious people are committed, are religiously committed to non-hierarchy. I, I, I think he, f I think he's misstepped here. You, that there is a god. Okay. Wait, wait, if please, please. If okay. you believe there's sure. a literal god that dictates the reins and that it's represented by a capricious woman and that glory to that woman in the form of sacrifice will bring the rains and end the drought. That mm -hmm. what, all, all of the predicating beliefs, all of the material assumptions about the nature of rain and that God, now you have a logical argument for human sacrifice. That's not about authority. You can come up with a logical argument for inhumane shit all the fucking time. The thing that you I'm saying, and the, and the point, one second, the point beliefs. of this discussion of which I'm trying to. Can you argue Joe Biden out of his belief in capitalism? Can you argue anybody out of their belief in capitalism, even the most empirical believer in capitalism? No, you can't. As it turns out, arguing people out of positions is not as simple as having the right argument. It's not just, you don't, there's not a magic series of words that you can memorize that will convince someone. No one is like that, not anyone. Or there might be somebody who's like that, but that's not the, that's not who you're engaging with. Argumentation, is a, a, an a, a evolving process. And the fa fact of reality is that there's a lot of times where you simply cannot convince somebody of something. They are committed to a position. And yes, that's annoying, but that's just a fact of reality. do is not necessarily argue that in any religious construction, you're gonna be able to get entirely, uh, you know, moral people or moral beliefs in any subset. I don't think that that's something you can say about any set of beliefs. You have, when you get into an extremism or fundamentalism representation of any religion, you wind up with these serious problems. Or, and that goes true for any ideology in general, I didn't beyond talk. the spiritual no, shit. No, stop, no, 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 no. Shit, wait, I can't, I can't well, you get, get away with you that. You get extremists? You can't, what do you, you mean? You can't equivocate this to extremist political systems. My arguments this, aren't against this is the, it is the same thing. religion. I'm arguing against the very concept of making statements about. Okay, but if that's true, so far, so far, I don't think that Bosch has has made solid arguments against the concept of religion. If it's true, he's not arguing against specific religions. I don't think that he's made convincing claims against all religion. Good night, Wendell. The material world based on metaphysical. Biceps and bikinis, name one religion where there isn't a hierarchy where the god is not above the people. Pantheism, animism. Those are two massive, massive religious groups. Easy. Uh, Taoism. I don't believe that Taoism has any um, specific gods. They believe in, in spiritual forces uh, that, are, that, are, that connect people together. Uh, Satanism. Um, let's think, uh, I mean, I, I, I kind of, I kind of cheated at first because I said both pantheism and, and animism. Oh, deism. Deism. Satanism does not actually... Okay, you just don't know you just don't know what Satanism is. So just why don't you go look into the actual teachings of of like Satanists? Because like a lot of Satanists don't like literally believe that Satan is a devil that is fighting against God. Satanism is a a spiritual rejection of the precepts of Christianity, and it does not uh, it does not propose uh, or okay, some forms of Satanism, of course, do put do have hierarchical hier hierarchical structures, but other forms of Satanism essentially argue an egoistic view of the world, where you and yourself are the only experience you can possibly have, and therefore that is the it is a egoistic view. Is yes, yeah, non it's it's a, well yeah I guess you're right. Well, some forms of Satanism are theistic, but yeah. Anyway, I gave you a number of examples, so there you go. Take your pick, or don't. I don't care. Presumptions. It has nothing to do with how extreme. But we've already is. agreed that already physical said, presumptions can I, be made with effect, right? Like that. You, in order to study history.
I have been watching you for years, but yeah, I just disagree on this one. If we want to talk about forces, sure, but there's always some hierarchy. I think that's, I think that's, I think you're just being stubborn. Like the idea that like a belief in animism, which is a, which is not a, a commonly practiced or is not as a frequently commonly practiced belief these days, but for a long period of in, for a long period of history, entire swaths of the world were animists, did not believe in a hierarchy. Humans and spirits lived in harmony with one another. It was explicitly non-hierarchical. So I just think you're being a little bit, I think you're just being a little stubborn on this. In order to study logic, in order to even... Punk C Corp says, are we still going to watch the Woo video you mentioned earlier? Not this stream, but we will. Don't worry, I've been I've been filling my partner's ears with it because it made me scream. Anyway, let's continue. But to get anywhere in theology, in order to get anywhere with logic in the first place, you're going to need to make some metaphysical assumptions. In order to engage with that external world, Wait, you need no, to make metaphysical that, no. assumptions. Outside of the Come basic on, we already ones agreed for with engaging that with the world, that's not the same as also believing in deities that control the rain. There are right. basic if you want to explore spiritually, there are certain assumptions you you're going to make. Just like if you want to explore history, there's going to be certain not assumptions you're going to make. Assumptions you want to explore are mathematics, Wait, you do not have to make any make. metaphysical assumptions to understand history at all. You don't have to. You can keep that in. past exists as a metaphysical assumption yeah exactly i think that was i think that was again maybe maybe he maybe this is just a misspeak but history yeah entirely within the material world the metaphysics in our case are just bridging consciousness gaps but we don't need to then go okay because we have to bridge the consciousness gap therefore it's okay to believe in fucking odin like you don't you can't jump that and then then run he, you're the one doing the jumping here, though. To any metaphysical, no, you argument. did. It. You have different arguments with respect to deities, right? Like, so with polytheism, arguments are going to be related to personal experience, the diversity of personal experiences, and then at that point, you're going to be getting into some form of polytheism. Well, That's the general steps that you're going to be able to get there. That's and okay. people are going to continue to have spiritual experiences. People are going to continue to explore spirituality on the basis of those assumptions. It's something that you agreed earlier in this conversation we're just going to have to yes, deal with. Yes, so from that perspective, that how do you I deal can't... with that socially? And that's where I'm saying pluralism is preferable to antitheism. Well, no, because because antitheism, in my opinion, is just another supremacy narrative at the end of the day. People are going to have... Right, because any any belief that can't be... Any any belief that is beyond, like, be, beyond immediate observation by your senses, you cannot observe that the past exists. In fact, we can't observe that anything but the present exists. We don't even know that the future exists. All of those are metaphysical assumptions. And... Yeah. Experiences that make them racist or sexist because we have tribal instincts like buried deep in our lizard brains that cause right, us I'm to make Right, I'm not saying trust every experience, right? Okay, okay so even right. though humans are going to keep having tribalistic biases ingrained into their brains, I think you should still principally fight against that type of what behavior. What the problem is, and articulate what the actual issue is at the end of the day. And I think this is a strong argument on Ocean Keltoy's part, that yes, that that there isn't a shortcut here. You have to elucidate the harm, even if, even, even as an empiricist, it is more value for you to elucidate the specific harm than to just cast a sort of blanket aspersion on something because it's religious. That's where I'm saying all the examples that you're bringing up are extremist fundamentalist expressions of religion. No, they're not. I even you're, you're talking I, I about, talked about were you talking about? I talked about horoscopes. That's not an extremist fundamentalist aspect of religion. And horoscopes, we can probably agree, can be practiced without anybody dying in the process. I don't care if people I think that die. You, I don't you make like a them. point with respect to horoscopes where it talks about essentializing people. And on that, I agree with you on. And I think I've said as much in the past. But I don't, I, I don't think that when you're looking at practices in general, you should be looking at them under the uh, auspices of what harm they cause 
and then making a judgment call on that effect. Because yes, people, again, are going to be religious. I mean, people are we, going to continue exploring religion. If we want to talk about the harm religion is causing right now, then you're going to have to wait for fundamentalist Christians to die off. Because if we're talking about uh, immediate yeah, I, and durable harm... We need to be able to criticize fundamentalist Christians without attacking our allies, right? Wait, you can... And wait, there are I'm saying plurally. I think this is another point that I think is uh, that I think is useful uh, that Ocean Keltoy brings up. Fundamentalist Christianity, Christian nationalism, is an incredible threat to uh, basically everyone who's not a fundamentalist Christian's well-being. We have a lot of allies in that struggle, and anti-theism poses that basically everyone is a fundamentalist Christian in waiting, and I don't think that's helpful. I I I think that on a on a I'm going to use the word here on an on a basis of pure pragmatism. I think Ocean Keltoy's point here is really strong because a uh, Christian fundamentalism is absolutely an antithetical to every other beliefs belief system. It it is a a religion that is a in, in deeply deeply supremacist religion. But it's not but but Vosh here is talking to a pagan who already agrees that there are great harms from from uh christian theology and from christian fundamentalism Have, is the way to go there are allies who have toxic masculine tendencies you can still target toxic masculinity while being like you, you you're jumping between like a little spiritual think, critiques and ethical ways. positions and like the pragmatic because coalition the, the, building the spiritual critiques that you're making and the spiritual critiques that I think that are a good system to go under are both ethical considerations, right? If Unless you think that human sacrifice is bad for some reason other than ethical, ethical reasons. I think that it's bad for ethical reasons, unless right? you believe that there's a God who will end a drought, in which case I think it's ethically good to do because you've now established supernatural- That's just a bad argument. I no, think it's, it, wait, it's at, not. At wait, that, that point, no. I, if you're gonna wait, you're say that that human sacrifice is ethical, under certain considerations? You wait, absolutely, wait. Especially Why? back in those days, we sacrificed people all the time to go on hunting trips, to go on expeditions, to go gather resources. All the right. time they lost people. If you could end a drought that's plaguing a country of millions with a human sacrifice, that is an incredibly straightforward ethical assumption for and that at time this, period, at, yeah. At, and in this time period. But, yeah, but again, Vosh has just invented a person. We're not talking about a specific here. This is just a this is just a a hypothetical person who apparently believes in human sacrifice. I I know there are obviously clearly there are obviously religions and ideologies that find human sacrifice acceptable. Um but like what but I don't understand what the argument is here. He's just invented a person who believes in human sacrifice and a god that 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 tells people or that that also believes in human sacrifice i just don't get it i just don't get what what the point is here am i missing something chat please like please hit me if i'm missing something on this one period that is an extremist notion uh, right? There are places in the world right now that are suffering from drought. What if you could end, what if you could like in West Africa end malaria with a human sacrifice? Can it be done? Well, I'm not religious, so no. Right. But if I'm, a person I'm, believed that. It... This is a bad argument. This is just, I, I'm not religious, so no. Again, I'll go back to the Joe Biden. Joe Biden, acting as the president, believes that the economy is ju a perfectly justified reason to sacrifice hundreds of thousands of essential workers. And that doesn't have essentially anything to do with religion. I just, I, I don't know. Biceps in Bikini says, I guess he's saying if you believed in a being that had access to both the natural and supernatural world, would you not do anything for its favor? No, I would probably try to kill that being. If there was a being that, a capricious being that had access to both the natural and supernatural world, I'd pull a fucking, I'd, I'd pull a fucking uh, golden compass and try to kill that motherfucker. Take him down. 
Yeah, could that's be not done. an expression of religion that I would be holding to. I think that if, if you're going to be engaging in harmful practices, it should not be done. But if harmful practice is bad, if Javier says, why does she keep bringing up Joe Biden? That just proves we are irrational and we shouldn't add more irrationality in. What I'm saying is the argument of the anti-theist is that religion is uniquely powerful in introducing ration irrationality. But I don't think it is. I think that there are tons of, uh, of loosely religious or irreligious people that are irrational for other reasons other than religion. And so far in this debate, the case has not been made particularly strongly that religion is uniquely, uh, that, that religion or faith uniquely produces irrationality, or at least uniquely produces irrationality that leads to harm. Because I think you could argue to a certain degree that any belief in the supernatural is to some degree irrational, but at that point, I think you're loosening the terms to the point of them not being useful anymore. You right? believe and we can make criticisms of religions on the basis of their harmful practices. You would be saving hundreds of thousands of lives. If you believed it could be done, would you agree it's an ethically right thing to do? Like, hey, any does anyone volunteer in the entirety of West Africa, one person is willing to lay themselves down on the table? Like I'm, not inter person? I'm not interested in getting convinced into some sort of human sacrifice notion. Wait, wait, wouldn't you... It's not you, something wait, that I would hold. If you believed that malaria, the biggest killer of humans, next to like... The key operating factor here is if you believed. If you believed. But Vosh is completely ignoring the, the way of like, how do you get to that belief? There are people right now who believe all kinds of things that have nothing to do with religion about the state of the economy, and they act on those things. The if you believe part is really important. Cancer or whatever could be ended with one yeah, this sacrifice. Is con yeah, as my chat's kind of pointing this out, this is consequentialist thinking. I am I'm, a consequentialist. I'm within, yeah, you're, if, that would be a big difference between us then. Because I think well, that's that another problem. an action that is ethically wrong is not going to be the best approach in order to actually deal it's, with a problem like this. it wouldn't like this. be an action that's ethically wrong. The consequences of it would be good. Therefore, it would be an ethically yeah, this good is, action. Yeah, this is the problem with consequentialism, not a problem with religious thinking. No, it, if it's, this is very basic religious like thinking your, right here. This is your position, not mine at this point. That you're saying that so, if you wait, held okay, religiosity so and were a consequentialist, you, this would be the result, right? If you but believe this is a problem that with consequentialism. Happen, that malaria could be ended with that, you would then say, no, malaria should continue, hundreds of thousands should die every year, not one person should I think be allowed that at to some point, you, if, if you have that situation as a reality, then you're going to... Javier uh, Valenzuela says, Anti-theists don't believe all irrationality comes from religion because that would be no different than theists believing all morality comes from religion. I know. I, I know. I, 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 I know. What I'm trying to say is, if you believe that religion is uniquely, it uniquely causes irrationality in such a way that it justifies being anti all forms of theism, Hence, the operating portion in the anti in the word anti-theist, the anti-portion of anti-theism. If you believe that religion is so irrational, so uniquely irrational that it must be opposed and driven out by one means or another, whatever, whichever type of version of this you believe, whether cultural or otherwise, out of our, our society, you have to be able to demonstrate that. And so far, I don't, I, I, don't think that's the case. I just want to address chatters who are shouting at me. Find like a couple of consequentialists that are probably going to be engaging with that on a consensual basis between each other. And then the problem does whatever it does. But that does not mean that I'm necessarily going to be condoning it because I'm not a fucking... What rationality does religion add? I mean, wouldn't that have to be taken on a religion to religion, religion basis? Right? I'm not arguing pro-religion. I am arguing, I am questioning the arguments being made by the anti-theist position. A, 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 a the anti-theist position is making an assertion that religion is bad, and I am saying, well, we have to have, we have to have a, a solid argument for that. Anyway, let's continue. Consequentialist at the end of the day. I'm, I believe that if you're going to be having practices that are harmful, then you need to be criticizing those practices on the basis of harm but all right but not like, addressing this, malaria would be those, harmful they can be uh, sorry i misspoke they uh these practices can be criticized on the basis of their harm 
Right. Like so, allowing malaria to continue, which would be the consequence of not allowing somebody to be sacrificed. That's not, is the religious practice is not doing something so, a practice. This is a contrived argument. I'm sorry? Is not doing something a practice. Abs wait, absolutely. You're, you're okay. absolutely responsible for what happens if you choose not to do something. Yes. Okay. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. This is gonna. Oh no! Oh no! Oh god! Oh no! We're going back to the the supererogative versus obligatory. Oh! I thought Vosh was. Oh no! No! We're going back in time. Shit! I'm sorry. I have to play this clip now. Hold on, I have to play it now. Hold on, I have to play it. Where's the clip? Where's the fucking clip? Hold on. Where is it? Where is it? Oh! Oh, where is the fucking thing? Can I find it? Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to find it anymore. Hold on, hold on, let me see. Damn it. It's been lost to time. Oh, it's been lost to time. Wait, maybe it hasn't been. Hold on, wait. There's one last thing. Wait, hold on. Uh, there was this meme, there was this meme where it was like, what the hell, you sound insane right now. I don't got it, it's, I can't find it anymore. Wait, did somebody find it? Nah. It was this meme where it's like, it's like the, if I say anything without playing the meme, it's gonna sound sus as shit. Let's just get back to the debate. I couldn't find the meme, so here we go. Um, then sure, and that can be like a large ethical conversation. But I think that at that point, you're going to want to talk about what, like, how effective those practices are going to be. Well, hundreds of thousands now, of people. Malaria. At that point, if this, if this situation arises, what is going to be your position? Do you hold that we should do the human sacrifice at that point? To save hundreds of, yeah, absolutely. That's, okay. that's the best. And then that's, that would be your position. I'm, I'm not necessarily of that position because of the harmful practice aspect. I like because then we're opening the door to doing human sacrifice for all kinds of stuff. We're building a cultural narrative and sort of in, to getting into human sacrifices, the regular practice generally. We do this and with military that's excursions. something that is we going to be creating a superstitious angle. And I'm we, not into that. We sacrifice our soldiers so that they can affect good, like geopolitical outcomes. World War II, we made the decision like, yeah, tens of thousands of our soldiers can die because it's better. That's a little bit different than, of a practice. Like a fight is a different practice than like killing them yourself. Blood is the only relevant human currency when it comes to great actions that are recorded in history books, I'm afraid. No matter what you choose, yes, no, abstainiousness or not, people are going sure. to get hurt. But you're going to also about agree that some of those malaria, actions are unethical. You can make an unethical action and have a beneficial consequences from it. This is ends justify the means, and we see that throughout history too. That doesn't that's, mean it's something we ought do. Well, that's consequentialism. If the, the ends do justify, right, and that's where our a big difference between us. Let me try and make this argument in a way to appeal to the consequentialism, though. So, if you're going to be, if you're wanting to uh, engage in a way, engage in a way that is going to create change. You're going to want to get as many people on your side as possible. No, I don't want to and get therefore, to the coalition you're going to be wanting part. to engage in a pluralist I, standard rather I than an anti-theist standard. I believe in reaching out to guys who have like toxic masculine aspects, but I'll still sit on here and argue that toxic masculinity is bad for like seven hours straight. This isn't sure. I, people are going to get mad at me for saying this, but I kind of find the whole meta-ethical, the whole like meta-ethical. Uh, bullshit to be a bit of cope you know like I, not not specifically for vosh just like in general 
Like people being obsessed with their meta meta ethical framework. Like I'm a utilitarian. I'm a rule utilitarian or an act utilitarian. I'm a consequentialist. I, you know, whatever. Like I, I don't find them very helpful. And also I find it weird that people switch seemingly on a moment's notice between act utilitarianism and rule utilitarianism, depending on when it's like, depending on when it's useful. Saying the ends justify the means when you're like a rule utilitarian, I don't think that really applies, right? Because like, if you're a rule utilitarian, well then the means are actually very important because if applied as a rule, it, it changes the, co the outcome. I, I don't know. I just I think it's I think it's generally like not a helpful layer to add on if that makes sense Anyway, whatever I'm not pitching this to a crowd right now I'm just talking about my basic beliefs about what what types of thoughts are good what what's structured well I'm not making like the case for like the the the, the pan-religious like socialist union of America or whatever if I was, then I wouldn't talk about any of this because I don't think I can convince anyone or affect any positive change, like while pitching it there behind the podium. But right, right here, while talking if, about if the basics. If you're going to hold a position that is anti-theist, then and then when you're expressing it on your channel, you're engaging in political action. I talk right? about toxic masculinity on my channel, but I still right. want you guys to have those tendencies. And that's good. So do I. I've got a, a video on toxic masculinity as well. So uh, we're on the same page with respect to that. Well, but yeah, so we are, agree. I think even that if it's we would agree that like toxic masculinity is in all cases bad, right? Well, if it's toxic masculinity, by definition, it has to be bad because it's right. toxic. So we can also talk about toxic religiosity, right? Uh, well, I would just think religiosity is toxic for religiosity, right? I, and so I don't you, think there's like, a good one. I think that with masculinity, you can have beneficial expressions of masculinity, and you can have beneficial expressions of religi of religiosity. We can just, what, what? we can separate those issues by saying we're not demonizing masculinity. We're talking about toxic masculinity, and we're not demonizing religiosity. We're rule utilitarianism is act utilitarianism under uncertainty. If you don't know the exact situation, follow the rule. The outcome is un is certain. The rules are no longer necessary. Okay. Shut the fuck up, Rosie Rosie. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> talking about toxic religiosity I am and that's the criticisms that were that were being made by uh plutarch and theophrastus in the past they were talking about toxic expressions of religiosity but i am talking about all religiosity it's not about the outcomes it's the thought process for me and so there's it's no beneficial religiosity to you wait 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 wait, wait 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 hold on a second doesn't that go against what he just said or am i am i missing something or doesn't that go against what vosh just said Hold on, let's go back through this. About toxic expressions of religiosity. But I am talking about all religiosity. It's not about the outcomes. It's the thought process for me. And so there's it's no beneficial religion. Hmm. That seems like an inconsistency. Religiosity to you. Everything that can be done from religiosity that is good can be done through secular means. And even if that wasn't the case, I would still be against religiosity. It is so far down. I, I hold it in even such a low regard. if it wasn't the regard. case. Okay. I, like, I, this is... You can get what you want This is where we get into toxic narratives of uh, atheism, in my opinion. This is, a, this is where if you have toxic veganism, if you have toxic leftism, you get like fucking tankies that have narratives in which they're better than everybody else. If you have toxic Christianity, that's when you get into authoritarian fundamentalism where everybody, they think they're better than everybody else. If you have toxic pagans, you get folkists who are racist have, shitheads who think, who think they're better and than everybody else. And then you people. have toxic it, atheists or anti-theists who engage in a supremacy narrative in which they think they're better about, than everybody else and want the world no, to be stop, secular. Wait, please stop. Uh, Okay, Again, it's not about being better than religious people. There are plenty of religious people who are in almost every imaginable sense more accomplished and more impressive than I am. It is about religion, the openness to spiritualism, being a fundamentally destructive thought process that erodes the ability to make... The same argument applies to politics, man. No. Okay. This has to be substantiated, though. If, if it's not, if you haven't substantiated how being open, and keep in mind that this is a broader argument than even anti-theism. What Vosh is making here is that even being open to the idea of spirituality, that even being open to the idea of spirituality is is like like corrupting or, or fundamentally dangerous. That's an even more aggressive position than he initially held, which I don't think that's been substantiated.
because I, if you're, politics, if you're open to you political narratives, then you're open to toxic political narratives. You, it's not about whether or not. Brennan Label. Maybe if you listen to a complete thought or statement without pausing, you would know what's being said. I know perfectly fine what's being said. I am a commentator and this is a debate review. If you don't want to watch me talk, fuck off. It's talk. You keep. Okay. Again, it's I not just, about. This is wait, the, no, no, like, you, please, please, please. The toxic masculinity you keep thing is such a great, it's such it's a better example. About because it's not about toxic religion versus non-toxic. I am attacking all of it. So right. It's unjustifiably. Right. I think. So, okay. You may think yeah. that. But you keep uh, you keep relating this to like well politics can have bad outcomes. I know everything can have bad right. outcomes because the criticism problem, you're applying applies there. No, it isn't because I think okay. religiosity fundamentally erodes the capacity to make logical arguments because you're capable of adding supernatural justifications for ethical arguments on a you know, fundamental a whole study level. of philosophy of religion that it requires. This is this is the most this is this is the fullest version of his argument so far. I want to listen to this again. No, it isn't because I think okay. religiosity fundamentally erodes the capacity to make logical arguments because you're capable of adding supernatural justifications for ethical arguments on a capable of. But anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. Atheists can do that. Atheists do in it, they they just don't call they just don't acknowledge it as supernatural. They pull on on bias, prejudice, all kinds of forms of non-rational information. Just I, I don't know. A whole study level. of philosophy of religion that it requires logical arguments of people it's going not, back and forth over this issue. If, if, religion, if what you were but saying you was still true, have supernatural listen, beliefs. Hold on. If what you're saying was true in in philosophy of religion, you would have the atheist being like these theists. Also, yes, uh, his stated argument here. I assume I'm going to assume in good faith that he doesn't literally mean that any religiosity fun like like I'm gonna I'm gonna say that he probably doesn't. Maybe this is unfair. Maybe he really does believe that religiosity or openness to spirituality fundamentally erodes you. But I feel like that's even that's an again an even more aggressive position than the anti theist position, where the anti theist position seems to be. Um, wait, uh, Brennan is starting. Wait, wait. I didn't see any of Brennan's comments, but okay. Anyway, let's continue. Yeah, he said fundamentally. Do you think that's really... I don't know. That was the position you were arguing. Maybe he does. I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to assume that, like, maybe this that, that wording came from frustration, but that might be a little bit unfair. Um... Yeah. are absolutely crazy. They're not using logical arguments no, at all, No, I didn't all, right? say religious people can't use logic. There are plenty of logical religious people. Right, but you said fundamentally, which yes. means that. Yes, it's, it's like, right? imagine... Like, yeah. So it's fundamentally an issue. So it's which means that it's not. There's not exceptions. No, yes, that is correct. Religion is okay. fundamentally an erosive force when it comes to rational thought. But there are still rational people in spite of their religion, much in the same way that there are people who are overwhelmingly good, but you might say that it's like fundamentally bad to undertip waiters. But there are still rational people in spite of their religion, much in the same way that there are people who are overwhelmingly good, but you might say that it's like fundamentally bad to undertip waiters. So you can have people who are like 99.9% .9 good, but they always undertip the waiters. And that's shitty of them to do, and that should be criticized, but it's still possible to be like a general. But, but that doesn't this then have to be, but this, this has to be substantiated. How are you sub substantiating this? This just seems like, this seems like. This seems like an unfalsifiable claim. How would you, how could you possibly substantiate this? How do you substantiate the idea that, that a person who is otherwise rational is being undermined their, by their religion? Hmm. Seems like a jump.
really, really great person in spite of I don't, that. Yeah, this is this is a, just a claim that you're not able to demonstrate, in my opinion. But I've been talking like about how you have it erodes... positive manifestations okay, of fine. religion. Okay, fine. If I okay, if I am a rational, um, uh, uh, um, uh, non-religious person, as long as you and I have the same basic axioms of well-being, it should mm -hmm. always be possible to change my mind on something. If you give counterexamples on empirics, you should always be able to adjust my position. There's always going to be some variety there because so much of what people understand about the world is. The way Vosh talks about empiricism, it sounds like he believes that any person who is an empiricist, there is like a key, a basically like a key phrase that if you say the words correctly, then it will automatically make them switch their position. But we know that even people who are very empirical, even atheists who are highly empirical people often have emotionally held beliefs that beliefs that aren't from religiosity. So it's not just religion. Religion isn't relig Wow, why did I say religion? Religion is not necessarily unique in this stance. I just, I don't know. I don't know about this. Color back uh, you'd have experience. irrational atheists and all that kind of stuff. I think well, that we've we've already agreed on that. Yeah, but it should. But it, so, theoretically, if you took a rational person and mm -hmm. they were a a, a a a secular, it should be possible. But if there was a religious person who had super like supernatural justifications for some of their positions, beliefs about the world that aren't tied directly to empirical analysis, even if you had the same basic axioms, if they had a disagreement with you based on some of those presuppositions, it would not be possible to change their mind because it's rooted in something outside the bounds of physical logic. You would have to... But you could. You could convince them to no longer believe in the thing outside of the physical world. Ton, t the fact that tons of people deconvert from religion is proof of this. That is tangible proof that people can be talked out of supernatural assumptions, right? I say this as somebody who used to be a true believer. A, I believed 100% to the, to the point that it destroyed my mental health when I was younger. Was I talked out of it? Yes, actually, believe it or not, I was. Um, it was a very long and grueling process. It took forever, but and there was there were many many occurrences. I talk about this in my spiritual deconstruction. I talk about how I came to the position that I was. Uh, it was a long process of of sep of like getting away from the church, of of challenging my beliefs, of having uh, life experiences that contradicted what the church had taught me. It was a very complicated process, but yes, a large amount, uh, a large amount of the experience was indeed having my beliefs challenged on rational grounds. Because as it turns out, um, most people don't just default to, well, you know, well, but, but God. I literally, yes, I literally pissed away my faith. Yes, that's a, it's, that's a funny reference that you'll understand when you watch the spiritual deconstruction. Anyway, let's continue. This is where, all right, so again, like this the, is like where he was talking about ethical example. constraints on religion that we've seen manifest in history a few times, going back to Plutarch and Theophrastus, where Plutarch is criticizing um, the superstitious, the superstitiousness of human sacrifice and as a harmful practice and the effects of that. And then uh, Theophrastus is talking about um, superstition fair, as it relates to the harm to your personal life. That's fair, but but the idea that a religious person cannot be talked out of being religious because they have a supernatural belief, that is inaccurate. Because we that's demonstrably false. Somebody that you're sitting here, I was a religious person, a true believer, and I was through a, 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 a admittedly very complex process, I was convinced that uh, that I know to no longer believe. So yes, it is. It would be inaccurate to continue um, to continue describing me that way. But it's true that I was that way at one point, and there's, uh, of course, I'm not the only one.
there are many people who no longer believe or who have converted to different religions or all kinds of things. So clearly there are things that can convince people, even if certain types of religiosity are very dangerous or, or like lock you into a certain way of thinking. Out of curiosity, now, could if you, you can, convince such a person that they were wrong in what they were doing? If you can demonstrate it to them, I think that I, it's, it can be difficult, but I think it's difficult to convince people uh, that they're wrong on things that they're wrong about generally. Ever try convincing you a know? religious person that they're following their religious doctrine too closely? That you think that's it's it's easy yeah, to convince them. That's, out that's of something that. that comes up. I've I've managed a, a community full of religious people. We have conversations around that all the time. Spiritual deconstruction. Um, I highly recommend. Actually, I would love it. I would recommend Vosh to go watch uh, the spiritual deconstruction that inspired my spiritual deconstruction, which was by the channel Good Mythical Morning. Um, Good Mythical Morning, they did a, a three-part spiritual deconstruction, and it has two separate guys who are both very eloquent and very intelligent. They both talk about their, how very different the path was from religion, how different their faith was and how they reached where they are now. And then they go back and they think about it again a year later after it. It's amazing. Highly, highly informative. I think people would find that very interesting. Uh, with respect to, okay, wait, is there's uh, mythic literalism is something that I, that crit is criticized within my community. So yes, there are, there is a process by which you could talk pe to people about their religious beliefs. And, uh, and even though I will grant Vosh, I will grant Vosh that when it comes to fundamentalists, the, that like fundamentalists, especially like Christian fundamentalists, Islamic fundamentalists, that is a specific type of indoctrination and isolation that can be very, very difficult to defeat. Um, it can be very difficult to break into that, but it is possible. And also most people aren't that extreme. Most religious people are not that, that hardcore hard-coded into their religion that's basically within christianity that would manifest as creationism i think that that when you're taking uh religious documents to a absolute literal standpoint you're gonna get ridiculous results like thinking that plants predate the sun which can be empirically shown is not true wait why would right? why would a person who believes in a god care about empirics why would the faulty tools of man stand up to the word of god printed on the bible yeah this is He's stuck arguing with Christians. Where you get into fundamentalism, Good which is something that wrong with criticizing. Okay, let's let's try this from a different I, perspective. I'm now okay. Christian. Uh, or no, I'm actually a pagan. Uh, no, is this going to get bad faith? Um, okay. Okay, and I hold a variety of beliefs. And I want you cool. to explain to me how they're, how they're morally wrong, okay? Okay. Okay, so... I'm saying, is this going to get bad faith? Because I know it's going to get bad faith. Because, of course, I've already seen this. I dedicate 80% of all my earnings to a teeth to the local church. Because I believe that if I don't do so, I'll be struck down. Tithe is 10%. It's literally in the name. Tithe means 10th. Tithe. Just gotta... I'm sorry that... This one irked me. I literally yelled at my ceiling when this one happened. I got so mad. A tithe is 10%. Don't use the word. It's in the name. Down by lightning. In my sleep. You mean a tithe? Tithe, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Angel Brad, thank you so very much. Thank you very much for your support. Truly, deeply appreciate it. Have a wonderful night. Okay. Um, so, like, getting 80% of your earnings is something that is well beyond means. And, like, that's not, unless you're making a shitload of money, that's, you're not going to be able to live very well off of that. So and that's why we're going to be talking about Theophrastus. Right. That's, that's, you are bringing harm to your own life in your religious practice. Yeah. And that's something that- Also, yes, tithing is a, uh, is, tithing is not exclusively Christian, but it is predominantly Christian. Yo, thank you, Angel Brat. Hey. Thank you again, Angel Brat. Let's continue. It's not gonna be helpful or productive to you. It does, and it's the gods, so I'll die. Right. And this, at the, there's a point of like, if somebody is just dead convinced that they're going to be engaging in self-harm, there's only so much logical reasoning that you can give to somebody to that, if they're religious it's or not. Like, if somebody is just like, I, like, if somebody's talking about self-harm from a perspective. If you're a Christian, 
that's true. If Vosh is correct if he's arguing against a Christian fundamentalist. Um, any number of perspectives, honestly, and they're dead convinced that they're going to be doing it. It's difficult to convince them. How can, out of you, it. How can you convince a person that self harm is wrong if that self harm? But is I gave you a logical a argument God. about it, and you just said so, right? If you, if whatever that, that logical is the ethical argument. argument that I give to anybody, if their response is so, and their ethics just disagree with you, this is something that is well outside the bounds of a religious conversation. Wait, no, it's not. It's God. Yeah, the point I, of gods is that they're above us. You know, you for personally, I think it's and this is I'm being serious for a moment. Incredibly okay. funny when pagans come on my stream and they right, talk about God gods, though they're well. buddy buddy. They're above you. That's the point. If you die for them, that that's the point in Christianity. That's the point in Christianity. Now I will say uh, that many religions do argue that the gods are supreme in one way or another, but I, but even like, if I'm not mistaken, even Hel like Hellenic beliefs did not believe that the gods were like strictly superior, just that they were basically physically superior. They are more powerful. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you, that just means they can hurt you. It doesn't mean that they're inherently sovereign. Like, I don't know. I think this is a little bit loose. A guard dog scared Odin away from taking advantage of a sleeping woman. So in some ways they kind of are above us and in other ways they're susceptible to the same faults. I, yeah, I think it depends very much on the religion because some religions basically are like the gods aren't less, aren't literally like su supreme. They're just p more powerful in some ways and also more flawed. Like, for example, I mean, like, uh, isn't that like a big thing about like, like Loki, like in, and, and I could be wrong here because again, I don't know a lot about Norse myth, but if I'm not mistaken, like part of the thing of Loki is that he would regularly exploit the weaknesses of other gods. Like in myth, that the idea is that there's like a, like a God, like one of the gods is exploiting the blindness, the blind spots frequently of the other gods. Anyway, whatever. This is just, a, this is like, not quite, okay, that's fine. Yeah, that, that's, the point that I'm trying to make here, the point that I'm trying to make right here is what NASDAQ is saying. Christianity is kind of unique in its infallibility clauses. Um, the, 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 the ultimate supremacy of God is a, is, is a, is for, is absolutely sure in Christianity. It's not 100% sure in every single religion. That's the point that I was trying to make. That's fine. They are literally the mesh that holds the world together for you guys. The idea, like the idea that you can- yeah. Ocean Keltoy says, we could discuss it. I don't have an issue with Vosh saying the gods are above us. The entailments that he tries to make out of it don't work though. Okay, that's fair. That's totally fair. No, some a, kind of a, like abstemious with, ethical argument we're like oh polytheism. no we would never do a human Hold sacrifice on. it's only I, the mesh I'm of the universe i agree with you but also disagree with you here because with with uh the majority of polytheist traditions that i'm familiar with yes the gods are above us this is this buddy buddy thing i would agree with you winds up being like a different kind of toxic and i think that that winds up being like an overcorrection of former christians but how is that at the toxic? same time say what how is that toxic if you believe it you the, believe it we're not even the buddy buddy thing no, the, no, the, uh, oh, sorry, no, the, the hierarchical them being above us self-harm for them thing. Like, how is that harmful at all? It's just as, uh, um, because it, wait, you just you talked about self-harm and then asked how it was harmful itself. It's harmful because it's self-harm. No, that applies to my logic because I don't think there's anything above me. You believe in gods. If self-harm is being done right. for a god, what's wrong with that? Because it's harmful. It's God. You can have ethical constraints on practice. This is not unreasonable. And this is something we see in history from polytheists, which is what I've been bringing up over and over again. I've seen lacks of those ethical constraints demonstrated by polytheists as well. Absolutely. And just as you're, as you're going to find ethical lapses within any ideological system. I agree with that. Right. But so we should criticize the ethical argument. lapses, not necessarily just the ideological system in the first place. What if a person... What if I said that leftists... If I gave you every example of toxic leftists not being convinced of empirical arguments, 
right? And then therefore said leftism bad because of these multiple examples of leftists being shitty. Again, it's not I, about whether I, again, the system can and, be bad. Every system can be bad. My problem right. is with the root. We're the agreeing difference now is on that. I can right. make a logical argument against a bad outcome in a leftist system. If a person believes that the universe is God and God determines what's right or wrong, there's literally no logical argument against that. It is logically bulletproof. It can't that's be an authoritarian position, and it's, that's what that. So, then the okay. universe is authoritarian. When you get into criticism of religion, and I think that you should be able to criticize religion. Often, what's going to be happening is that you're going to be finding fundamentalism, extremism, or authoritarianism. And if you want to criticize religion and be against the toxic aspects of it, you can criticize them toxic? on those basis. And in, and I add to that supremacy uh, supremacy narratives, which I think show up in and these things will show up in multiple. Uh, ideologies, and that's what makes them into toxic narratives. What's toxic about the supremacy narrative if you believe that the god is above you? They're literally above you. So the supremacy narrative would be the correct one. It'd be logically correct, right? Uh, this, uh, this would be, do you think that the universe is bigger than you or something like that? I don't necessarily think that that winds up being a supremacy narrative in the in that way. Clearly, supremacy narrative, does. what I'm talking about is... Wait a second. Hold on a second. Uh-oh. Oh no! Oh, I didn't. Oh, god damn it! I didn't. I didn't want to do this. What about suprem? What about the supremacy narratives of believing in the state? People also people statists. Any statist, any statist inherently believes that the state is greater than any individual, which means if it's the state. Hmm. Yeah, see, this is this this runs into issues that aren't unique to theism. The idea that of believing in some form of supremacy does not necessarily entail uh does not necessarily entail religiosity and it's not unique to religiosity. People who people like I mean, fuck, this is the entire operation behind atheistic states like Stalin like Stalinism. You don't get my argument? Hold on, let me try to explain this again. The argument here is that religion is uniquely bad in that it leaves you open to irrational arguments based on a based on the thing that you believe in that is not necessarily material, but that has the power of supremacy over you. A state also fits those definitions. It is not necessarily 100% material. It is a emergent trait. Uh, it is a, uh, it is, it has material aspects for sure, just like certain types of religion and perhaps you could argue that gods do. And people believe, e any statist will believe that the state, the, the collective of the state is obviously, because of the nature of what a state is, is supreme to an individual. Any person who believes that states should exist will believe that obviously if a state should exist, well then obviously that thing is more important than the individuals that make up the state. Otherwise you wouldn't need it. So the problem that you run into is that people can also come to the exact same conclusions that Vosh is arguing that religious people will come to here and they also will not be able to be argued out of it because of their presupposition that the state a semi-material construct that is greater than the individual fills the exact same role. Well, a state is, it, I mean, a state has to be, by definition, has to be supreme to an individual, right? Because a state can only be formed by presiding over individuals. That is the, that is the whole point that the state makes the rules that individuals have to follow, and the state is given a monopoly uh, on violence, which means that it, you know, it has the ability to impose rules on individuals. The state is definitionally supre supreme to the individual. Otherwise, you wouldn't be a statist. So, like, this indicates, this, this, what I'm trying to say here real quick is that um, yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I agree, Killjoy. But but what I'm trying to say here is that 
that uh how do I describe this? Fuck. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm I'm not explaining this correctly. What I'm trying to say here is that uh the the argument that uh the argument that like this okay, I got it. I got it. I figured it out. Here we go. Here's how I explain this. The argument that Ocean Keltoy is making is that it the operating factor is the supremacy narrative. The supremacy narrative is what leads people to make horrible paint like like violent decisions on in the name of some greater being be it a god or a state or a a, a, a personality that in a personality cult it is that supremacy narrative it is the, the 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 primacy of the state the primacy of the god that leads people to make those decisions not the belief in god in and of itself not the belief in the spiritual in and of itself does that make sense I hope that's a better way of describing it. The argument that Ocean Keltoy is making is that the operating factor is the supremacy narrative, not the spiritual belief. And Vosh's argument here, by, by, by refusing or by not acknowledging the fact that people often sacrifice themselves on behalf of a state, that because of the supremacy narrative, because I must do it for mother, for the motherland, I must do it for America, and flying the American flag is no different than somebody dying for a god that they believe is supreme. Therefore, the operating factor is the supremacy narrative. There we go. I think I made my point. When you have populations of people viewing themselves as better than others, what if and I say that you can find people? this in religion as a prime example with Christianity, where they believe that the fact that they believe in their God ultimately makes them better than others because they think that everybody else is going to be going and burning for all of eternity. What's That's logically the supremacy incorrect about that? Right? What's logically incorrect about that? What's logically incorrect What's about the problem? that? If they, if they're God's chosen people and they believe that all the heretics. And this is this is the um, this is the problem here, which is that I could make the same argument to Vosh because I, as far as I know, Vosh is ultimately a statist. He believes that, like, I mean, I think, I mean, I think in the like his his like sort of ideal far far future, he believes in like a stateless society or whatever. But I do believe that he he has some belief in the state, and if that's the case, then these same arguments could be made to him. What things will you justify in the name of the greater supremacy of the state that needs to go forward? Or the greater supremacy of society, which must continue? These, it, these, the, this, is a, this argument can be made for both things. Critics are going to burn. What's right, if issue? you want to talk, talk about like an internal critique or an external critique or what? How could you like, convince them Because you can, you can have internal problems with it and that they claim that their God is merciful and then also is like sending a bunch of people to burn that he created. And then you get into questions of like whether or not he knows the future and uh, who actually bears responsibility if he's the creator, especially if you're like a Calvinist or something like that and you hold a deterministic view that God creates all of his creations, is uh, omnibenevolent, and then also creates his creations in order to... that. that generate sin that winds up being self-contradictory and illogical because it's you have God is, above the, logic. God is the ultimate responsible uh element there and is therefore responsible for all of the actions that people below him God is contribute above to logic. because he's the one who created all of it it doesn't right? matter God is above logic you you're... God is illogical now you're just saying now you wanted to... in Christianity in Christianity I do not know I cannot speak for polytheists I can certainly not speak for animists. I don't believe that uh, animists, I don't know that all polytheists believe that, that, that logic is below God. Christians certainly do. I think most, I, would, I think the predominant amount of Christians believe that logic flows from God because of Aquinas. I believe it was Aquinas who made that argument, but I don't know. Say no, that your whether logic, or not God is logical logic there. Is I, I can't. Just, I can't speak. I can't speak on behalf of pan of of, uh, of uh, polytheists. Cool. Just said God is illogical at that point. Well, from our perspective, yeah, God works in mysterious ways. It's like Christianity one hundred and one, right? It doesn't matter whether or not. Uh, pan Sabi says, "I only see comparing the superiority of states as something which works, not comparing states to individuals." I guess you are saying the state is superior to the absence of a state when you say it's superior to an individual. No, I mean that part of the assumption of a state is that a state is made up 
of individuals, that a state is is necessarily a structure which exists above and over a group of individuals. That's what a state is. A state is a sovereignty over a set of individuals. That's like what a state is. That's what I mean when I say, yes, that, that that's all I'm saying. I'm saying that's that's a fact. I'm not saying that it's superior to an absence of a state. I am an anti-statist. Yeah. But that's the point though. It's same thing is the, it's the same argument that Vosh is making about the gods. Okay. Thank you, Ocean Kelter. That's good insight. God is logical. You can't mount a logical argument. All right, well, you God. asked what was logically wrong with it, and then you said that God like is it beyond logic or whatever. Exactly. So, so your right, argument now he's outside defeated. of logic, and that would be the criticism of the of the religion at that point. Not that is not a logical position. Well, uh, yeah, oh, sure, great. Then he's outside of logic. So what's the issue? Right. They say as so they're stabbing they, you to death. That's the problem with it then, is that it's illogical. What's the issue with that? What do you mean, what's the issue with that? I'm Are you just, saying I'm you just can't a criticize Christian religion talking. and saying it's illogical? Well, hold on. Christianity, Christians have been criticized for the holes in their story for quite a long time, and yet the I institution agree. persists. What is the issue and internally? I don't, I don't have a problem with criticizing religion. I think that criticizing religion is a good thing, and I think that calling their deity illogical when it manifests in logical inconsistencies is good. It's the and universe. we should continue doing that. Well, it doesn't matter if the Christian God is illogical. The Christian God is the Christian God. Logic is a human tool. Your mind literally cannot comprehend the logistics of. I don't what think God that. Does. I think a lot of Christians have trouble biting a bullet and saying that their God is illogical. Is it wrong? Every well, time, every time I've gotten a Christian that, to go into that wrong they start trying. To my knowledge, well, in my experience, most Christians will say that logic issues forth from God, that logic is a creation of God. Backtrack real fast. So it's the, the question, Maybe bad if you're a consequentialist, you're going to be wondering whether or not these arguments are effective. That one is effective. If I'm a consequentialist, I'm going to be beating these people to death with a hammer because there is literally no fucking way to make a logical argument to a person whose ethics are rooted in religion. It's not possible. I've tried. You can't do it. You just hope that I think you've just tried positions. with toxic people. No, like, this, this, this is if, I, if, so. I think this is the part that a lot of people had issues with because I feel like this is where it really goes off into just one hundred percent bad faith. Like the idea that you need to kill. I know he's being hyperbolic and 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 whatever, but it really does not help his case here to make a joke like to like to like joke or whatever. And I don't know if it's a joke because other arguments that he's made in this conversation seem to to align with that conclusion, which is a little bit odd to me. I feel like this is a very very big misstep in the construction of his argument. It's not about toxicity. I can try to convince people who are wrong based on secular grounds. That's my whole channel. I can't convince people who are wrong on something ethically because they religiously believe in some extra thing, is some dark matter solution that fixes their positions. I, so I think this might just be a problem with the way that you're handling the argument at that point, because I've been able to do this. And I'm, so then we'd want to be able to figure out, all right, what arguments are you using there and why aren't they being effective? It doesn't, wait, it doesn't not, matter whether or not If you're just like they're... haranguing against religious belief, it's not actually going to be effective as far as changing somebody's mind. This is a good point on Ocean Keltoy's point. I often argue that there's very little, there's very little uh, value in trying to argue with fundamentalists because fundamentalists are so, they take such a deep, such an incredibly deep amount of time However, I often have talked about how I think it's valuable to inoculate people against fundamentalism, which I think is much more useful. And inoculating a people against fundamentalism requires uh, a little bit more of a surgical approach than saying, I'm going to bash your head in if you're religious. Doesn't doesn't matter matter their deity. Whether or not you're effective, the problem is there isn't a right answer. There's no reliable way of doing it. Hold the, on. If, a person if you're a consequentialist believes, and you're saying it doesn't matter whether or not it's effective, what the fuck are you going? How do you disprove a metaphysically rooted material belief? Well, we just went through saying it's illogical, right? It do, that doesn't matter. It's metaphysics. It's a whole level above. Metaphysics has to is constrained by logic. 
No, ask not any, if the, ask, ask anybody that's engaging in metaphysics. This no, is going to not be if the metaphysical, logic. not if the metaphysical position is they work in mysterious ways. That is a valid metaph metaphysical position. It is one tier above I think our that's, logic. Okay, so we're we're probably God works in mysterious ways. Is that is not a that's not like a real that's like a thought terminating cliche that's used like very tritely. God, God works in mysterious ways is like a thing that your grandma says to you when you, like, when you lose your job, uh, but the next day your job burns down, and so you lost your job, but you didn't die in the fire, and then your grandma goes, well, God works in mysterious ways. Maybe it was good that you lost your job. It's not really like a, a solidly held um, religious position going to agree that God works in mysterious ways is a boring cop out as far as the conversation goes. We're not and that's judging when somebody a book is saying here. that they've lost the conversation. People die point. over this. Yeah. That's a problem, right? It's not a problem for them. Yes, and that's true. Hippie Punk also points out that God works in mysterious ways is a Christian and predominantly American saying. That's like a like a it's like a it's like a quip. It's not like a real thing. Uh, we, you, right, you don't recenter. understand. You at the the groundwork here is we're entering here is, a non-productive space, and I want to see if we can find a productive space. The on groundwork this. here is not workable if they if there is a material belief that is rooted in a metaphysical presupposition that can't be logically argued against then there's no way to move them off that belief outside of hitting them on the head and hoping their logic brain is a really good Logic is a really good tool against uh, somebody who's holding a logically ridiculous position if you can get them to understand the fallaciousness Can you it. explain logically you why you believe to... in the gods? Just, just really quick, can you run by I me? I went how through that exactly argument right? a minute ago with respect to experience. What? So you, you wait. You realize that your brain is like a faulty meat computer that can interpret anything. Yeah, it wants I'm not saying that it it's. Hey, that also this argument your your brain is a faulty meat computer is undermines a lot of the arguments about empiricism because empiricism is ultimately limited by our perception. Empiricism is ultimately limited by our ability to process the information in front of us and it is also limited by our ability to make correct connections because keep in mind that you can have all of you can have a entire array of true data, of real factual data in front of you, and you can connect it in the wrong ways. For example, reconstructing dinosaur bones. You know that a lot of the dinosaurs that like, like a lot of popular dinosaurs really didn't look like that. They were based off of like very faulty reconstructions because while the bones were real and the dinosaurs did exist, the way that we constructed them, the way that we impressed the function upon them isn't always accurate. So this is a, this is not a good, ar this is not a, a ar this is not an argument in Vosh's favor. This doesn't, this doesn't, isn't a trump card or anything like that. This doesn't really respond to what's being talked about in this, like, to a full degree. I right. think with absolute confidence. I'm, I may, uh, so... I think that getting into a discussion about whether or not the gods exist is going to be something that is going to require a whole nother conversation. They, think, they don't. Especially with the amount of resistance that you're putting. They oh, this is interesting. Here you go. Here's an example of this. The different ways that Megalosaurus has been reconstructed. 1850s first reconstructions were done to more to impress people and were based on partial remains. These reconstructions were on display at Crystal Palace Park, circa 1900. 50 more years of research allowed for reconstructions to be based upon more complete theropod dinosaur remains. However, postures were bipedal and based upon lizards po put into upright walking poses. This per version was more po common in popular media for most of the 20th century. Since the late 20th century, since the 1990s, more accurate depictions of theropods began to appear in popular media. These are based upon nearly 200 years of study combined with the latest scientific techniques to reveal more detail. So yeah, this is an example of how of of how this more or less the same data can be reconstructed and reanalyzed in different ways. Empiricism is of course limited by this. They don't. They don't. It Let's just be fair. It doesn't require convo. They don't. There's no evidence for it. We can only make sure statements. There is. You have, we have... Uh, experiential. Okay, this is a humorous version. I love it. The skull. 
how aliens would reconstruct this animal. The actual animal. Fucking true! That's really funny, all right? Listen, that's funny. That's a funny one, okay? Do you think this is a symptom of post 9-11 religious extremism poisoning our understanding of how religions are supposed to function or am I reaching? I feel like we've grown up at a time of Christians and Islamic ex extremism and that may have some people believing all religions devolve into extremism rather than extremism being a portion of the population. Eh, it could be a part of it. I just think that like, I mean, yeah, I, I think a lot of Americans are unironically, legitimately, and also correctly traumatized by experiencing fundamentalist Christianity. We live in America, a, a, a in an absolutely insane country that that u utilizes uh, a a, a, a ham-fisted combination of of like capitalist humanism and Christ and outright Christian theocracy to bludgeon people into line. It yeah, it really fucks. It really really fucks up with people. Yes. Evidence is something that what you can engage with, evidence. Um, with and that includes and that includes me too. By the way, I I am. I fucking, I have a, a, a deep, deep hatred for fundamentalist Christianity because of the damage that it did to me and the people that I love. Theologically, say what? What experiential evidence is there for the existence of the gods? We have multiplicity of spiritual experiences in humans that's across not, the this world. Isn't, that's, that's not an answer. Humans have had multiplicities of lots of things. That, that's not, our brains are faulty. We interpret our, yeah, our dying can, moments as spiritual experiences. What you're giving is a logical argument. Javier says, wait, no, we just added more data which changed the outputs in reference to the dinosaur example. No, it's not just that. It's not just that there was more data. More data helped, but also if you'll notice, a the purpose changed. So in the 1850s one, yes, there was some incomplete data, but also the dinosaurs were being reconstructed for entertainment. So the purpose changes the way that we reconstruct things. and. And 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 that's not just a matter of more data. It's a it means that even in the in an empirical sense, how you decide to connect them is a matter of interpretation, and we are fallible in that interpretation. Yes, you can get more accurate ones, but our bias will always exist in that way. That one can be an atheist, and I agree with you. One can be an atheist no, logically, that's and the that's the only fine. logical argument that you can have, or at least an agnostic. No. Yes, yes. And this is where right. So then. What I'm going to do is instead of like getting into an argument with you on this is defer to the uh, existing philosophical debates on PhD level in the highest I don't echelons care. They're of this all conversation gay. People where they're going back and forth with each for other centuries. and that the atheist philosophers are not saying what you're saying to their opponents. That's fine. They're all cuckolds. People have oh been talking God. about dragons for hundreds of years. Does that mean dragons are real? People have shared, we have a cultural imagination that informs Historically, we're pretty confident that dragons do not exist. But as far as philosophy is concerned, we're, it's the Our confidence level is significantly lower with respect to gods. I think about as many people right now believe in, uh, believe in uh, dragons as they do Odin and stuff. Um, those numbers are probably not too far off. What would I would being? doubt that. How can you make? How can you possibly argue the validity of one particular religious system when the world moved on from it, and the evidence is, oh yeah, well I know our brains can weakly interpret like liminal experiences as supernatural, depending on their cultural influences. Right. If, if you want to talk about potentiality, right, and you want to hold that potentiality is a valid cause for holding a position, then you're going to get into potentiality regarding the gods. And then now it's valid to hold that position because our brains are uh, potentially, we're potentially engaging in hallucinations with respect to spiritual experiences. We're also potentially dealing with reality when we have spiritual experiences. Both are true, right? Could, it's as far as the potentiality is concerned. Dreams. This people, is why there's uh, agnosticism when it comes to what the settled matter on this is. It's not that when you get into the philosophical tradition of debate around this issue on the highest levels, it's not a settled science. There is no, it's not a settled science because there's never been a start to the science. It's not a settled anything. You have settled to make philosophy it then. Uh, science is the wrong term. You're correct. But uh, philosophy would be a sub or uh, science would be a subset of philosophy. I agree and, with that, but right. it's definitely so, not a science. There's no empirical evidence for any of it. I agreed. I've already given you that. Then, it's not like, theology nothing. is not a science in the same way uh well 
though that a lot any philosophical system that doesn't fall under science is not a science, right? Uh, I hesitate to say which way history goes, but it's where you get into questions of soft sciences, whether or not they're sciences or whatever the fuck. I think um, generally speaking, it's best when we adjust our beliefs in accordance with the evidence, because if we mm -hmm. make wild leaps and start I'm going to be completely honest. I think the direction that I think the direction that he went into here uh calling people cucks is just out of frustration, which all right, you know. Do you think Vosh is making an ought statement with a lot of these positions rather than just saying religion isn't empirical? I feel like he's saying if religion isn't empirical, you ought not practice. Yes. Yes, I think that's fairly clear. Yeah. ethical arguments and material understandings on um highly speculative, like very circumstantial or possibly non-existent evidence, you like run into massive problems when it comes to like social cohesion, ethical uh, reasoning, stuff like that. I think it's important that we- Here we have a lot of agreement. We scale yeah. it back. Now this isn't yeah. an argument against philosophy or like analytical engagement. I mean, everyone can have different opinions in the world around them, that's fine. But I think there's a big difference between like varying philosophical perspectives and saying that like we live in a world with spirits or with gods or there is an afterlife because now you're talking about things that affect what people might make logical arguments off of and if a person believes I, in the afterlife how can i tell them that murdering people is wrong if they think it'll send them to a better place tons of people do that though right like Hey, isn't this just reverse, like, the Christian argument of, well, if God doesn't tell me not to murder people, how will I, how will, how will people, if, if God doesn't tell people not to murder, there'll just be murders and rapes everywhere. Well, as it turns out, there's many reasons why people come to the conclusion that murder and rape is wrong. Like, I, I agree that logic is important in these sorts of things, but, like, this is just, this is just the mirror version of the, if God doesn't, like, yeah. I would love it if everybody tempered their beliefs with respect to available evidence on the matter. Um, and that would be something that, like, I believe that I'm doing that with respect to my religious exploration. I hold that I don't know that the gods exist, but I'm operating, exploring with respect to my experiences. Uh, and my belief in the gods is provisional on the basis of that respect. Right. And I think that if more people did that, we'd have a healthier engagement with respect to religion. And I think that if you Why want to talk they... again, toxic spirituality is when you it's don't do odd, that. Yeah. You can't tell a person, hey, only have faith when the evidence demands it. That's not how faith works. I think that you can temper your position with respect to available evidence. That's, That's not reasonable. what faith is. Again, I'm, this, I'm pagan, not Christian. We're looking at faith completely differently, I think. Um, so yeah. Faith, faith is extremely varied depending on the religion that you belong to. The concept of faith is incredibly different. And, um, in fact, I'm not actually sure if faith is even all that relevant in some religions. Like, faith is a thing that's important because it's important to God in Christianity. In Christianity, God demands faith. You must trust him even when things are bad. That is bludgeoned over your head. But how do, like, how does, like, uh, for example, how does a spiritual belief in feng shui, how is that affected by faith? I think, I think this is being, I think faith is being applied here, like, eh, there are a lot of, there are, yeah, I feel like this is a, a misapplication because faith is, faith is highly, highly relevant to Christianity, but I don't know that faith is all that, re like, relevant to every religion. Yes, I am, Punksy Corpse. I'm I'm committed. So this is interesting. This is interesting to me. It's midnight and I'm still streaming and you all and half of you are complaining. God damn. Can't please anybody. I'm going to bed. Fuck you. Just kidding. I'm finishing it. When you say I know it's late. Around Look, I know it's late. I also really want to go eat dinner and smoke weed, but this is also an incredibly fascinating conversation, and there's a lot of people here engaging in really good faith. So, you know. When you say you have faith in something, you're, I mean, you're saying that in, in spite of a lack of evidence, you still believe that no. thing exists. No, I think it's a bad definition of faith. With 
uh, faith generally with Christians are using the word faith. They're just using it un under the context of trust that they trust in the Bible or something like that. They, they have faith the in the success. Bible, so they're trusting it. And uh, I think that that's a bad narrative when your trust in something is overruling counter evidence. Counter evidence is the is the issue. That I think an absence of defeaters and an absence of harm is not necessarily a Scoots monkey, that's true. That could be considered a, a faith-based position from the outside, but that that doesn't mean that person is valuing faith. You see, does that does that distinction make sense? Uh, it's it's a small distinction, but I think it's important. Uh, a person who is organizing certain aspects of their house according to Feng Shui might be acting on a faithful belief but that doesn't mean that like faith is genuinely important to them as it's as its own standalone thing whereas for Christians faith is seen as a sign of your devotion to God your faith how much faith you put in God is seen as how righteous you are so it's very it's a little bit different problem but in presence of defeaters and in presence of harm that's where you get serious issues. That's just a God of the gaps argument, though. At that point, you just get to fill in the blank. And that also lets you speculate on the I, afterlife. This is, absence is of defeaters is philosophy. Like if, you're, if you can hold a position, absence of defeaters, and also discussing whether or not it's likely, right? No, like, you, know, you can't just believe whole... something because there's no defeaters. That's the invisible unicorn argument. Like, there might be an invisible unicorn right behind me that's only invisible when people look at it, but at all other times is fully visible and staring at and me. And if somebody's... All right, let's go with the invisible unicorn. If somebody's engaging in a religious practice with invisible unicorn because they have experiences with respect to the invisible unicorn and they're giving offerings to the invisible unicorn that are not something that is going to be substantially affecting their life, they're engaging in that religion in a way that is uh, not harming anybody else i don't necessarily have a problem with that i think because they should in be absence of defeaters in absence of harm okay this is where this i remember this portion of the debate and this is the part where i think i most strongly disagree with vosh by this argument you could you could essentially uh you should you could essentially forcibly imprison basically anyone because people do all, people do all kinds of things that are incorrect or ill-informed and that doesn't mean they should be fucking institutionalized that is ah it's just really careless never i know it's like an hour into the debate but still engaging in that religion in a way that is uh not harming anybody else I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I think because they should in be absence of defeaters, section. in absence of harm, you're engaging in a practice that all right, fine, whatever. I would, it's, it's not it's absence your, of harm. Your life, I don't give a shit. No, it's not absence of harm though. They they live with the constant belief that there's a fucking mystical creature hovering right behind them. This is mental illness. They, they a lot of things can be categorized as mental illness. I just, I think this is, I just think this is really, this is where the conversation starts to borderline on a, a bit irresponsible. Like, again, people believe in all kinds of things that aren't uh, fully substantiated, but the harm is like the important part, right? Hey, Ziggy, it's been forever. I hope you're doing well. It's wonderful to see you. Hi, Ziggy, and hi, Ziggy's mom. They, they, they can't... Uh, as if getting into religion as mental illness territory is also not the take. DSM-5 even is, goes against that. Well, they're um, also full so... of cocks. No. It's not about doing, it's about believing. You can't prove untreated schizophrenics are wrong. Why do we do anything about it then? Well, I'm going to actually get mad. Okay, I'm... Trying to forcibly treat schizophrenic people is literally the thing that led to the asylum, the, the, the horrific state of asylums in the United States of America and across the world. The fact that the, that the state and a bunch of uh, fucking tut-tutting psychologists who thought they knew everything felt the need to correct every perceivable misconception. Fuck, you know what? Wait, this is talked about in Better Call Saul. Wait a minute, this is addressed in literally in Better Call Saul.
just because someone has an irrational belief doesn't mean that they need treatment. It doesn't mean that they need to be put, sectioned. It doesn't mean they need to be imprisoned against their will. You can just let things be if they're not doing any harm. There is no harm in, sure, talk to them, challenge their beliefs if you want to, but that doesn't mean you need to go in ridiculous. By the way, you should be sectioned. Anybody here who thinks that somebody should be sectioned just because they have an irrational belief, guess what? You deserve imprisonment too. And I hope you get it. Truly, I, I'm actually angry at this and you actually have successfully made me mad. If you think that somebody should be imprisoned just for holding an irrational belief, I hope you get what you deserve. I hope you rot in an insane asylum someday, just like the people you would stand by and, contempt and condemn. Fucking piece of shit liberals. Holy shit. Suck my goddamn cock. Suck my fucking dick. You people are the worst. You people, this mentality, this mentality right here, the idea that Huh. Well, I am the supreme rationalist. I hold no irrational beliefs. Therefore, anybody who holds an irrational belief that I find silly should be imprisoned and subject to dehumanizing treatment. Fuck yourself. Do your do us all a favor and fucking fuck off forever. Who did it bad? Well, Vosh said it first, but I don't know. I don't know how seriously uh, I don't, well, I mean, I don't know. I think this argument is really shitty, but the people in chat were the ones I was freaking out at. It really drives me fucking, it really fucking drives me up a wall. Yes, this is literally the same thinking that Christians use to, to justify conversion therapy. Oh, you're different than me? Oh, I think what you're doing is irrational. That justifies you being put in prison. No, fuck you. I don't care. I actually do not care. I don't care. I will grant, let's say, let's let's even grant that all all Christian belief, all religious belief is irrational. If you think that someone should be imprisoned for a for a belief that you think is irrational just because it's irrational and not because it's doing any harm, you are the problem. You are no better than, than fucking the worst people we've argued with on here. It's so, oh my God, it's so fucked up. Leanne Scott says, well, very true, mama. I, I, I'm an old nurse and sectioning was, was down often to, sh was, was, was down often to shelf a prob a problem of society. God, it's so fucking gross. See, this is the part that actually makes me mad and it frustrates me, it frustrates me that Vosh even said this and I know why people were mad about this part of the debate and I know why people ended up, I, I can see now why the toxic, I mean, I even saw it in the original viewing, but this right here was really shitty. This was a, this was a bad argument. It's a bad argument, it's a bad argument and it's harmful. The, I like pushing the idea or, or rather, I should say, reinforcing the idea that people should be in prison for being irrational is, it, it is the, the most toxic form of hyper-psychologizing and hyper-medicalizing. It is literally what led to lobotomies. It is literally what led to the justification of using mentally ill people as fucking experiments. It's so gross. Yes, of, of Rhodes brings it up. This also kind of, this kind of stuff interacts with how people with DID and plural folks are treated. Once again, real quick, imagine, let's, let's travel back in time together. Let's pretend we're in 1850. If you're in 1850 saying you believe that you're a woman may as well be saying that you believe that there is a unicorn behind you. Should that person... That person in 1850 will have no way in their entire lifetime to prove that what they are saying is legitimate. It is a, from for all intents and purposes, completely irrational belief given the scientific knowledge at the time. By this argument, that person should be sectioned and subject to imprisonment. 
That is so fucking gross. I'm really sorry about that, Killjoy. It's more constructive to do a historical retrospective on asylums. I've talked about this many times, but also it's not just a matter of knowing the history of asylums. It's also just thinking for a second. I want people to just think for a second. People, even rationalists, have all kinds of beliefs. They have all kinds of hopes, and many of them will never be proven in our time. For example, what if we're wrong? What if communism fucking sucks? What if it is impossible? Do you think that if somebody determines, and there's no way we can prove this right now, we can just make plausible and strong assertive statements based on various information, there's no way to prove it. it do you think, do you think that uh, anybody who believes in communism in the current day with the knowledge that you can't to a T prove it should be imprisoned just because they hold an irrational belief? If you think about the idea that irrational belief should lead to someone being fucking put in an asylum, that's fucking insane. That in and of itself is insane. You should be sectioned. I agree. Live by your own rules. In you go. Into the bin you go. Wait, no, oh no, no. Right. The, the belief that there's a... Th that's literally a definition of schizophrenia. The, di the only difference between schizophrenic diagnoses and some religious beliefs is the legitimacy of the institutions they're pulling from. Let's Let's be real, like, the idea of, like, yeah, there's an invisible, like, spirit hanging around me at all times, like... like ...hovering right behind me. Like, yeah, come on, that would be diagnosable. That would. Even if it's like no. a... Yeah, it would! No. If it de it depends on like how it's being approached, right? And I think that I'm not somebody who's uh, familiar. You know, it's times like these that I can't help but go, damn, I really hope you never have to deal with like a psychological condition, like a, like like one that one that's stigmatized by society, because let's be real. Depression and anxiety are stigmatized by society, but nothing to the degree of schizophrenia, nothing to the degree of dementia, nothing to the degree of severe memory loss, nothing to the degree of other forms of hallucinations. Despite the fact that tons of very good and very otherwise very rational people can have episodes of, of hallucinations or episodes of irrationality, I just really, it's just, it's a real shame. Vosh has bipolar disorder. Okay, dude. Okay, I'm sorry. This is going to be a hot take, but bipolar is not nearly as stigmatized in our society as schizophrenics. This is not a hot take at all. This is the coldest take I've ever given. If you want to look at the amount of people who are, who live in, in, in like permanent care facilities or who are, uh, or, or, or who are uh, sectioned against their will, it's, Lots of schizophrenics. Our society is fucking horrible to people with schizophrenia. It's fucking disgusting. Like, like, it's not even, it's not even comparable. Yes, BPD is another one that's dis unbelievably demonized. And keep in mind that schizophrenia is often made worse by the way that our society reacts to it. It's worsened. People with minor schizophrenic episodes uh, will will become will get it uh, uh, arrested by the police, or they'll get reported, or they'll get sectioned, and then it gets worse because of the trauma. This is a fact. If you do even the tiniest bit of research on how people with schizophrenia are, are treated in our society, you will discover this to be true. It is so gross.
This is the part. This is the part that made me most mad, admittedly. You can tell. Yes, that's another thing too, Killjoy, that the paranoia factor might be largely environmental and mental because a lot of uh, schizophrenics in other social in other social milieus that aren't the United States don't always have the paranoid aspect. Uh, we live in a paranoid society, so it makes sense that schizophrenia in America uh, expresses itself often as extreme paranoia because we're a paranoid society. Anyway, I just really hate this mentality. I really hate the mentality that thinks it's funny to joke about, like, I don't know. I don't think this, I don't think, it's not even a joke. This is just a serious, he's made this argument multiple times. The bashing with a rock, the bashing with a hammer, and and now the sectioning people. Dank Catlord, what's the best way you can get the best outcomes for people with various psychological conditions? Treating them like a human being? showing some actual empathy and not being always patriarchal, always patronizing. Um, in our society, we dehumanize people who have various disorders because they're seen as lesser just because they have to deal with one thing, but they're not. They're humans. They are equal and valuable, even if they have some irrational beliefs. With the, as familiar with diagnoses process when it comes to schizophrenia. So that's an aspect well, of the debate that I would just say that life. I don't know a whole lot on. And I think that, but I think that what, what happens with a religious comparison, comparison between religion and mental illness is that it takes the stigma against mental illness and applies it unnecessarily onto religion in a way that is engaging in another supremacy narrative. And that's a, that's an issue that I have with that. Well, kind of approach. There is a video, so although by so. an atheist, if you want to check it out, by Shannon Q talking about this narrative, compared, comparing religion to mental illness, that I advise anybody in your audience to check out. Shannon do you, Q, do you think religion, please stop calling religion and mental illness is the name of the video. Do you think schizophrenia is bad? Like, I think bad schizophrenia should be treated, if you want, much just my... How you know I mean? you... I'm not against, like, uh, if somebody has a mental illness, they should seek treatment on that. But how could you possibly differentiate? between a person who religiously believes there's the invisible unicorn blood. How can you differentiate between the person who believes in a secret cabal of capitalists controlling society and a secret cabal of Jewish people and the Ninja Turtles controlling society? As it turns out, there are ways to distinguish, but it's not always as easy as we would like. The sad truth is that a lot of our beliefs are very are very tenuous, and that should give us a slice of humble pie. Swash trolling? I have no idea. Blah blah. And a person who believes it through psychosis. Again, this is a DSM five question. I would consult people that are experts on that issue. I don't. As far as like how you do it, you know what I mean? Like I, we can talk about ethically because I know plenty of people who are schizophrenic and religious, right? That they're dealing with some kind of psychosis and they're also religious. And there are ways of separating the two as far as like how they approach things. And they're on treatment for one and it helps with the schizophrenia and yet they remain religious. This is something that I've seen a few times within my community. I think that if you are getting, uh, if, if you have mental illness and are religious, you should seek treatment for the mental illness. Absolutely. Wouldn't, wouldn't that potentially just mean that some religious beliefs are just Han Sabi says, if you have a schizophrenic person who is actively a danger to others and themselves, should they be institutionalized and why? Uh, depends on a lot of questions. I think that you may have no choice but to restrain someone if they are an active danger to other people. However, in our society, what is deemed an active danger to the self, to oneself and others is incredibly, incredibly, uh, poorly defined and so people are just constantly thrown in to the uh to the uh, asylum slash prison system over and over again with no attempt to solve the problem 
Do I think there are circumstances in which there is no option but to restrain someone who is threatening you? Yeah, of course. But I think that should be done as humanely as possible and with the goal of freeing them and removing the danger, not with the goal of indefinitely uh, locking someone up or with the goal of, 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 uh, of basically putting someone in permanent stasis. So I, I do think, I do think there are circumstances in which you can argue for like the need to imprison someone, or even though I, I deeply disagree generally with the existence of prisons and I find them genuinely harrowing and disgusting, prisons haunt my fucking nightmares and I know they haunt the nightmares of basically everyone in America. You can see it in our media. Everyone is terrified of the idea of having to live in a horrific torture box. Um, I think that if you have like a mass murderer that is that is gunning for your family, you might have no choice but to like fight them. But that's not what's the case in most cases. So. Yes, that's my opinion on that. I could have a whole stream on that topic, and I probably will in the future. Identical to schizophrenia, but resistant to treatment. If the I think that mental illness can take on religious themes, but that doesn't mean that religion is a mental illness. Well, I certainly think some things that people believe for religious reasons tend to have them overlapping with diagnosable symptoms of mental conditions, right? Yeah, just because the overlap doesn't mean that they're the same thing. No, I don't think that's the getting same. into correlation causation territory. I don't think they're the same thing. I just think it's notable. Like, I mean, there have been suicide now You can note cults. it all you want to, but yeah, I'd say this is a conversation you need to have with an expert, not me. Fair. I mean, there have been suicide cults throughout history, but I don't know if you can make an ethical argument against ritualistic suicide if you thought that it was like emboldening Again, your harmful deity. practices, man. As it's getting not right harmful back. That's, that's Theophrastus. That if you're harming God. yourself with your religious practice, that's the problem. What if they think they'll be tortured forever if they don't do it? That's the whole point of hell, right? If they don't do the He's ritualistic suicide. Then you have this, we can, ha we can have a conversation a about toxic religions too. Right. If you want to, if you want to have like um, a religion that necessitates harmful practices, that's a toxic religion. And again, this gets into that analogy that we were talking about earlier with respect to toxic masculinity and toxic spirituality. Is you, there wrong? are toxic spiritualities, absolutely. There's also toxic masculinity. There's also toxic expressions of a lot of things. But there's also expressions of those things which are not toxic, including masculinity and spirituality. The difference is, as long as a secular person shares my axioms, I can explain to them how some elements of masculinity are harmful. But if a person has a religious belief in the, the validity of things they do that are toxic, I can't make that argument against them. Is the crux of this just that arguing against them the is hard? Huh? Like, I, because again, I've had these conversations with people that like hold a position pretty strongly and still move them away from engaging in harmful practices on the basis of these arguments that I'm giving you. Okay, I, my, at they, the end of the day, so it's it, imagine I've been able to do this. You you can, can theoretically you're just can, saying it's hard so you don't want to like it's just this no, is it, this is really strange. It's it's always possible because people are um ir irrational. So even if a person has a logically consistent metaphysical belief in God telling them to kill the whores, you can still pull them out of that if you, I don't know, hit them in the head hard enough or give them ice cream or something. People are weird. It's about the underlying logic. And it's, it's, it's about who you can reform. And War Buddy says, thank you for your passionate advocacy for schizophrenics and other demonized disorders. It makes my heart warm and fuzzy in, in spite of the debate nonsense. Look, okay, I don't want to get like turbo emotional because, you know, whatever. That's going to, people are going to probably call me in, in manipulative or whatever but seriously it makes me so fucking sad look like okay i don't want to get super personal about this but i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about it real quick when i was younger my stepdad tried to have my sister uh uh, uh institutionalized and it was actually like pretty much the final nail in the coffin for my relationship with my dad was when he tried to have my little my my little sister institutionalized and my little sister was a really like a big troublemaker. She had a lot of of behavioral issues and a lot of things like that. Most of it was stuff that hurt herself. She was self-destructive in a lot of ways and got into a lot of trouble. But like my dad basically and he could have done it. He could have succeeded at that. Like 
it would have been it would have been really really easy for him to get my sister put into an asylum and i don't even know what would have happened to her if that's the case also like i spent a lot of time with my grandmother when she had dementia and my grandma was it was no no fault of her own she she had dementia her her brain she had like probably some form of brain cancer and she she couldn't tell reality from fiction anymore. She didn't hurt anybody, ever. She never hurt anybody. In fact, she was mostly just nice and confused most of the time. But people treat people like her, like she's a monster or scary or bad, and they just want to shove her in a sad, wet hole to die. And it's disgusting. It hurts. So the reason why I get up and armed about this shit is because it's really serious to me. The fact that, like, and also because I know that uh, a me less than less than you know less than a hundred years ago, me being trans would have been enough to put me in an asylum for life. It would have been enough for, to put my partners Doe and Fawn into into a, an asylum for life. I know so many people who, if they if if one thing had gone wrong, they could have ended up in an asylum. I have a partner who was forcibly sectioned. I don't even want to get into the details. Forcibly sectioned completely unjustly by an aggressive parent. It is so fucking gross and it's incredibly, incredibly, incredibly emotional topic for me, but it's also one that I have a lot of very, very well-grounded beliefs on. I think it, I really, really, really just wish people would fucking think for a second because when, because once it happens to you, it's too fucking late, you know? It might be too late anyway. Our society is so goddamn fucked. They just, our society just wants to throw everyone in prison. Maybe we're all just gonna die in a cold prison cell alone, separated from the people that we love because of something, because, I don't know, we were, we were too gender crazy, or we had, we were communists, or, uh, or we liked kinker, who knows, or maybe we thought, we, we believed in tarot cards or whatever. I just, I hate that view of the world, and I wish that every single person who held that type of worldview would fucking die. I wish you people would fucking die off. I wish you violent, uh, uh, domination-obsessed people would just fucking kick the bucket and get the fuck out of here. Okay, I'm done. I need to be done for the night. Uh, this is making me too pissed off, but I think we've basically reached the end of this conversation anyway. This debate has gone back, uh, you know, has gone back and forth forever. I think the end of this debate was a total misstep. Uh, I think that that argument made Vosh look stupid at the end. However, I don't think Vosh is a stupid person. I don't think Vosh is a bad person. I don't think Vosh is a racist. So before all of everybody tries to cancel me for thinking that Vosh did not do so great in this debate, I just don't think that he made a good case for anti-theism. And I also think that he, uh, in his frustration, uh, made some pretty hurtful attacks towards people who have har harmless beliefs in his audience, uh, harmless beliefs that I don't think that he would be able to, even despite his confidence in anti-theism, I don't think that he would be able to contend with most of the religious people in his audience simply because I don't think he knows enough about their beliefs. So I just wish he would, uh, I don't know, I just wish he would consider not saying that those people should have their heads bashed in and that they should be sectioned because I imagine... Uh, because I know everybody in the world has a lot of irrational beliefs. Okay? So, no hate, no madness. I am really tired now, and I'm tired of the circles in this conversation, and it's gotten toxic. But, you have now heard my thoughts on the anti-theism discourse. Okay?